Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably the biggest release we're getting this year in games, so rather than do a, an impressions video where I just ramble on by myself, or do a quick kind of exhibition video where we just show off the gameplay, I invited my friend Cash to sit down and talk through our thoughts around the game. We both spend a huge amount of time over the last month playing the game, and I wanted to uh, articulate that properly. So we, when we sat down, it actually clocked in at nearly two hours, which is what this video is. So uh, hopefully you can stick through with it and see what we thought. So this video is also set to uh, the backdrop of the first couple of hours of the game, completely unedited. It's just me playing through it. I recorded some footage, so it gives an idea of what the uh, the, the first hours of the game look like. Um, I've uh, you know there's no volume to it or anything like that, so the spoilers are kept to a minimum. We try not to go into spoilers in the review. So uh, there shouldn't be any story spoilers at the moment, but a lot of people will have already played through the game, so it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. But uh, hopefully you enjoy the video, and uh, here it is. So we've both been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, it was, it's, well, I think we've both been anticipating it for a long time. I think it's fair to say that we are both fans of the original game. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this ever since it was uh, rumoured. Before we even seen the trailer, everyone was like, look at conspiracy theories on... Twi uh, tweets and uh, things like that. I mean, it's uh, Rockstar definitely go against the grain of what everyone else normally does in that most of the companies are releasing annual titles uh, and balancing franchises across multiple studios, whereas Rockstar tend to go the other way in that they retreat for half a decade or more, create something and make more money than everyone put together yeah. anyway. Um, and it's been a what, what? I mean, how long has Grand Theft Auto Five been out now? Five years? Ah, uh, it must be longer. I'm sure it's about 2012 or something. So it's a long time. And I mean, obviously they've had a lot of legs on Grand Theft Auto Five, so it's not just that they released that and then had to retreat. They've obviously had the initial release on consoles, then they had the next gen release on current consoles. So yeah, it was a three. It's, it's weird to think of that as a 360 and PS3 game. Yeah, it is. Like it's, it still holds up well. I think I played it on. Um, cousin's ps3 when i went around and i was like this still looks okay but that was probably the pinnacle of the limit of the previous gen yes and i think you could see it creaking a little bit and it looks it does look and play better on the current consoles and then you've got the pc again which looks the best even as better you yeah you can do that vr and there's mods and all that yeah kind of stuff. <laughs> although i think rockstar do everything they can to stop mods happening yeah i think they've kind of relented a little bit just because there's that much effort and remember, there was, i'm sure there was something in the news that they were just <coughs> really ham on some modders and people just like what the fuck are you doing just let them they're although they're not doing it online which was well the core thing as well which was a problem in itself because the the gta online was also a thing um and it was right oh, for hackers was it I, I never heard anything about gta online <laughs> yeah i mean i played a little bit when it first came out it was a disaster and i've never really gone back and i've missed out on heists and everything and but obviously it, it's been a huge hit it's probably been the big money spinner for Grand Theft Auto i think they and Rockstar. seriously were caught off guard with how successful it was because the website was we'll do more DLC story DLC with uh, Trevor Franklin yeah and the main characters um, the and then when it came down to it just remove that was like nah we'll just put all our money in uh, online let people buy fancy new cars <laughs> charge them to buy in-game currency and it's worked it's I think they've made stupid money from yeah. the online and I don't think it's necessarily a thing where they just decided that we're better off making online content only and no single player DLC although I think there's a lot of metrics to suggest that people don't buy single player DLC very much unless it is substantial but I think they didn't they have a lot of political trouble within the organisation of like lead developers leaving and, and there's a lot of upset yeah I heard of things like that I've, I've had friends I've worked there and they've moved on for whatever reason um, yeah I, I, think, I think that's fair to say that there was something in there like maybe leaning one way and kind of traditional developers wanting to lean the traditional way kind of you know giving their story content rather than um, kind of online stuff but I mean if that's the market that's the way it is then you can't really blame them for well, going no. down that route and if people are buying it you know it, it, we as, as the gaming community we've only got ourselves to blame really I can't say I've ever bought a shark card but I certainly have bought other the things cosmetics so yeah part it's, of the problem. it's I mean it's for the amount of abuse and hate that they get I think it's Surprisingly, like I've bought cosmetic things on, say, Dota 2 when I was playing it pretty hardcore. Oh, it's just to make things extra shiny. It doesn't change the way I game play anyway by just saying, you know what, I like this character, I'll give him a fancy new hat. And yeah. it's, it's, I mean, it sounds silly because you're paying real world money 
for a virtual thing that's not tangible in any way no, in the real not. world but it's and they could revoke your license for tomorrow and it wouldn't, you wouldn't absolutely. get that money back but I mean it's, it's I, at the end of the day it's my <coughs> money it's it's pennies to me I, if I want to play with it I'm going to mess around with it and but I suppose really the, the point is like Grand Theft Auto 5 came out a long time ago they have re-released it and re-released it again GTA Online has given them a, a constant extreme of flow revenue. Yeah. of revenue over the years so it, it's been a long time since Rockstar released any game and even with that in mind so say what five six years since Grand Theft Auto 5 came yeah. out uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 has been in development for eight years and it, it marks the start of a new approach to how they develop things whereas previously they would hand off projects to uh, either a single or a, or a subgroup of their overall studios this game has been developed in conjunction with all was it eight of their studios or something yeah. like that so each one taking different aspects so we've had like a, a global effort to push for this I think they've even got Rockstar Mumbai or something now <laughs> working on this uh, which I didn't know existed until I know I did until you told me <laughs> but uh, yeah it's, it's crazy so they've, they've, they've funneled in far more resources into this than they have anything else before it's taken a far longer time to develop this um, and what we've got is the final product which it, it's a I think it's a strange game in a lot of regards um, and we'll work through kind of the ins and outs of what we think about it as we talk but it's a game I think up front I'll say it's a game I really very much like but it's got some weird quirks and I can definitely see this as not being for everybody yeah um, so I think just jumping right into it really the, the I suppose these are single player games they're very story focused and Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, for anyone who's played the first game this would never be a sequel because the first game very much takes place at the end of the west and I think it's safe to say spoilers it's, for Red Dead 1 you know there's not much leeway to carry on the story of like that central character given the setting and given what happens to people in that yeah in absolutely that game. It, just, it ends kind of uh, everything's tied together it ends kind of the beginning of the industrial revolution really yeah. uh, taking over uh <coughs> The south, southeast coast, the rest of America, um, cities becoming much bigger. The the law is kind of everywhere now. It's not so much provinces and towns, locale look after themselves. It's very much under one umbrella, one organization, yeah. one government. The FBI so, is kind of starting to yeah. form with. What are they? Are they just the. In, oh God, I don't think they are the FBI at that point, but are they're, they're no, the makings of it. It's it's the, the equivalent, basically. And there was kind <coughs> of. Um, Barney hunting groups as well, which make a very big appearance in Red Dead Redemption Two. Yes, that just act as the de facto government or the de facto long arm of the law. Yeah. So I think so. Right off the bat, Red Dead Redemption Two is a prequel, and it tells the story. It bulks out the story and explains the story of the uh, Vandalin Gang, which is the gang that you're hunting down the remnants of in the first game, and it basically goes through the the final, I suppose, the final days of that gang and. The, uh, the Wild West is a setting really whereas the first game the Wild West has very much ended and you're tidying up the loose ends yeah. this one is that, that decline of the West and, and it's it's very much the story of this gang that no longer it, it no longer has a place in the world it, it knows and it's it, and how it comes to term with yeah, that how they've learned to live, how they've grown up how they've interacted with other people how they've made the life for themselves is no longer compatible with the the way that America is going yeah and uh, it it, it <laughs> rubs some people up the wrong way more than others and how, how they all, all fit together but yeah it, it's, it, it is that story and I must admit when, it, when I heard it was going to be a pre well, I had two problems when it, when it was announced first that it was called Red Dead Redemption 2 yeah. rather than Red Dead something else which is what I was expecting because you had Red Dead Revolver on the PS2 exactly. which, I mean it, it's kind of its own thing which is fine very in Red Dead Redemption it. it's all about redemption and you know redeeming yourself and I thought this one might be you know yeah. Another R word, basically, but not necessarily two. <clears throat> yeah, completely. And uh, so, uh, so that was my first little gripe about it. Uh, and then the second one that it was that it was a prequel. So I was like, well, shit, you're gonna kind of know how everything goes. Absolutely. Um, and uh, that was that was my thought exactly. I thought I I would love because Red Dead Redemption's uh, original story was fantastic. Uh, yeah. But then the characters, you know what happens to them. You kind of know what happens before as well. So you kind of you yes. you think, okay, I know how this is gonna turn out as well. Um, you think I'd be much happier with another story in that saying or another part of the world exactly. which is still within the Wild West which is fine and then I heard there's going to be a prequel and there's going to be certain characters returning I wasn't too sure what to make of it uh, yeah com completely because as you say like I'd be, I would uh, on the surface I would have been far happier with that separate kind of story just taking that gameplay and that setting because that's what Grand Theft Auto does 
Yeah, uh, and it's, it's even with the PS2 era of the Grand Theft Autos, we had the San Andreas, Liberty City, Vice City. Yes. They're their own little universe, and then the, re- the next gen but equivalents with Grand Theft Auto 4 and Grand Theft Auto 5, they're in their own little universe, yeah. and they might be nods to the original games, but there's no kind of overlapping story or overlapping characters. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's kind of recurring, like. Uh, like Laszlo, which is just almost like the Deadpool of that universe. It just kind of—he's the sound designer or sound editor for this game. As yeah, well. he's, he's like the sound director. It'd be weird seeing him like on a radio as he <laughs> traveling on a horse or something. I'm, I'm surprised actually. That I didn't realize he was actually involved with the game, but uh, I'm not surprised that, that, that I've seen the end credits roll. But uh, I'm surprised he isn't in it in some capacity. He, he might be. I yeah, I don't know. We haven't uh, tipped through it that long yet, but there's. Uh, he's just, absolute opportunity for it so yeah you're right in saying that I think with this being a prequel there was that expectation that well you know the kind of broad beats how interesting can it be but uh, I think really one thing I'd say up the front this game does a very good job of subverting my expectations it handles everything in a very kind of in a really good way for a prequel it doesn't all oh, it, it does have a few kind of nods and a few winks and a few kind of like little kind of sly hey this is how that, that happened yeah. from the first game but for the most part uh, I, I mean, I suppose really what I ultimately thought was that you would be in this gang and everyone would be dead by the end of it and you'd go out in some kind of blaze of glory <laughs> and the people who you know survive into the first game would be the sole survivors and that's it. And that isn't how this goes at no, all. No, I exactly was anticipating. I was anticipating something was going to turn um, John Marston, who is the uh, main guy in Red Dead Redemption, and he would be, I would say, forced maybe or something would turn him to kind of gun down all his fellow gang members um, to do that, and it's <coughs> yeah, it's it's it subverts that expectation, like you say. Yeah, and I think it's it's weird as well because if we had this Red Dead Redemption as the first game, and the one that we had in last gen as Red Dead Redemption two, it wouldn't have worked. Not as well, no. I think it's that knowledge of the first game and and what happens against the yeah against this that makes it a little bit more impactful, especially in the later part of the game. I think yeah, this um, is a prequel in story, but in terms of game, it's very much a, a strong sequel. It's everything that a sequel should be. Yeah, it, it's it's great, and the the story. I mean, I suppose the, the story I mentioned it's the the latter days of the Van Allen Gang. You play as Arthur Morgan, who is right hand man and chief enforcer to Dutch Van Allen, who's the gang leader. Um, and it's it's really you trying to keep this gang going, and it's as things kind of fall apart around them, really. Um, and that's probably as much as we should say about the the story. Without going too much into it, yeah. The broad arc is basically this gang falling to pieces, and how Arthur tries to keep it together keep during together, that time. Keep together, keep running, keep motivations high, and yeah. And 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 Dutch very much relies on him. He looks upon him as a son. He raised him from like a teenager. Taught him to read. Yeah. Um. He, you know, his father figure. Yeah, completely. And uh, and that that that's kind of the the broad strokes of this. And. Some members of the gang are very capable. Other ones are weak. Uh, you know, weaker members who don't contribute as much. And as as a as a kind of ensemble cast, I think is really really good. Um, and I think the just the, the presentation and the voice acting, and I think Rockstar's done this for a while now, is just so natural and nuanced. It's 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 well above ninety nine percent of other things. There, like we've got a war came out this year, and that was had a great story and a very good presentation. But this is like a tier above that, I'd say. I, I think it's kind of that that tier that like the likes of The Last of Us hit, where it's just got that slight kind of more human element to it than yeah. most games ever get. Um, Wait, it's hard to do that in the middle of Norse mythology. Well, it is. <laughs> I just mean like that kind of. I, I, I don't know. It's hard that the kind of that nuance and depth because Kratos is a Kratos does kind of have it. I suppose without going off on too, too off on topic, but it's just not quite there. Okay. But maybe you're right because it is about hacking monsters apart rather yeah. than people. People being uh, people, yeah. which is what we can relate to. But um, I mean, the the the, the Dwandalan gang is quite a sizable cast of characters. What is like oh, 15 holy people moly! Or I didn't think there. it was that big. I thought because all the uh, posters and trailers, I, I I'm looking at your monitor there with the wallpaper on. There's like five or six people, and I thought it's just going to be a group <coughs> of gang members just riding through town, uh, breaking down doors, taking money, driving off to the next town, rinse and repeating. And yeah, it's not not at all. I mean, yeah, some 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 people are very honourable and brave, other ones are sly and, and, and cowardly and everything in between really and, and 
I think every character gets at least a moment to shine. Some of them are very much background characters, but there's one or two missions where they will be very much at the forefront. Yeah. There's other characters that you barely see anything of for the first half of the game, and all of a sudden they are they become a significant and major character towards the back end. Everyone's used well. Everyone feels like a fleshed out person. Um, and everyone has a relationship with Arthur in the camp because he is this kind of very central figure. Everyone relies on him to do things, which plays into them giving you jobs a lot of the time and giving you missions. Um, and you can, as, as a player, you can influence that because you can interact with people. Uh, you can antagonize or greet as a basic thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, you, you can kind of piss them off or. It has consequences. It can do, yeah. And you can also do do tasks with them. So, like, one of the, uh, one of the I think it's Lenny, one of the guys in the gang. Uh, he likes to play dom. No, he likes to play a five finger fillet, and you yep. can have conversations with him. Uh, there is one of the girls in the camp. I think is it Tilly or something like that. The African lady or the West yes, lady. yeah. Um, I think she likes to play dominoes. Uh, you can go hunting with Charles, who's uh, like half black, half yeah, he's half black, half Indian character. He's 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 an awesome character. He's a beast, isn't he? He's, I, I I fucking love Charles. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Um, and like g- going in, what looking at the preview material, like you say, I. I I thought these would be kind of disposable secondary characters and everyone's really well fleshed out. Yeah. The people who are probably the least fleshed out are the ones that are in the first game. Yeah. The likes of Bill Williamson and Javier Escuela. They Bill Williamson is in a fair amount, but he's still just a drunk kind of brute. Yeah, he's just a really angry brutish guy and uh, I went back and I watched some videos on the original Red Dead Redemption and how he's presented and he was more or less the same. Yeah, I think yeah. the biggest difference would probably have yeah between this one and this original he's, game. He's I, quite nice and capable. He, he's quite um, polished. He's quite um, if proper. I, if I remember rightly, though, he's barely in the first game. He he was a, you, you mentioned him a lot by name, and then you kind of meet him, and then you take him down basically. Yeah, I, I remember. But he's him. In, in the original game. He's just a fucking stereotype. He's got the big speedy Gonzalez hat, and he's got the really strong accent. But this one, it's Still it took me a while to figure out. Like I thought, maybe he's a is a is a mix maybe like is he half Mexican half white uh, because he, he couldn't really tell he had his like little bowler hat on yeah he, he still got a poncho looked, though yeah so you know he's definitely Mexican <laughs> <laughs> but just uh, a flag on there just in case <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah the, the the cast is great and, right. uh, and it, it works because each member and I think this goes on what you're saying with storytelling and tier above other games each member is easily separate entity and is easily kind of distinguishable from everybody else there isn't i don't think two members that are the same or two members have the same kind of values and attitudes they're all very much individuals Com- completely and it? it's really well done and really well rounded how it's oh yeah done. and i mean the, the, the i think as well arthur as a character i was sitting thinking about this the other day i think arthur's probably one of my favorite main characters i've ever played as yeah i uh, i think i did think i would say this but i would say he's Better than John Marston. Oh, I, I'd easily say. It. And I, I, I fucking don't get me wrong. I love John Marston in the original Red Dead Redemption. Mm. And I, I didn't think I'd, I'd say it. I'd be like, I, so I, as soon as it's announced, you'd be playing as Arthur Morgan. I, 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 I was like, he doesn't hold a candle to John. Well, I was like, who is he? He's never mentioned. He can't be that important as a result Absolutely. in the first game. So, like, why do I care about this? Like, again, which folded in, in fears of like, oh, this is going to be a by the numbers prequel. And I don't know why I thought that because I don't think Rockstar have ever really. Done disappointed that. me in yeah, that regard absolutely. Arthur Morgan is such a fucking good character you, you just I just like him he's just a really likeable guy even though he's not always the nicest person and yeah. you, you can influence how bad he is in that regard he's done and he continues to do some really horrible shit but, but it's always tries to be for like an honourable reason or, yeah. the, or what he perceives as the right reason like because of his upbringing with the Dutch family yeah right? he, he's completely loyal to Dutch like to a fault at least you know as the story begins and how you play as a might like tends to influence that a little bit um but yeah, I just really fucking like him. I think he's got one of the best arcs in a video game ever, really, as a character, as a, for personal growth. Yeah, um, it's it's fucking unreal. Uh, and yeah, I, I, it's hard to talk more about it without going into why the arc is really good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I, I, I suppose probably, we'll come on to that. And like, I mean, talking about Dutch as well, I think he's a really good character. Like, you know where he ends up because he's ultimately the the antagonist of the first yeah. game. Um, and he was a dick. He he, was, he 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 stirred up loads of. He kicked the hornet's nest in the, nest in the original game. He kind of stirred up trouble with the Indians, got them on his side, and they were riding through Blackwater Town and causing mayhem in this chief. And you kind of think, why would John Marston ever ride with this guy or follow this guy yeah. when he was just the biggest like? He's like a tier above everybody else in terms of like how dangerous and like 
unstable he seems because he's politically dangerous he gets he usually gets other people to do his bidding and those yeah. are the most dangerous people he's charismatic he's like a Charles Manson type figure though, yeah he? like he is like he, I really in the first game I even really liked Dutch I thought even his voice is a weird choice of a voice I, yeah. I don't know like, the name of the voice actor he doesn't but it's kind of like this strange reedy kind of voice yeah but it's it just he's a, just an interesting character because yeah. he's not your typical kind of like Bad gruff outlaw. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's quite gentlemanly and that's why he's, he's a charmer. That's how he wins people around. I mean, ultimately, he's more of a con man than an outlaw. Yeah, a, a, like you know, a, at least in his in his youth or his, his past. Um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, this game starts. You don't know where he ends up. Obviously, is like this kind of somewhat deranged madman who kills in the swimmingly. But when this starts, he's very much about like he's got like a code and he's very honourable and he has he's an idea of what's, what's and... right about what they do and like he's got this kind of philosophical view of like freedom and how he wants to wants to have freedom in the wild west to like enable them to do that yeah he's he's, he's given this idea of a utopia to his followers and he he's the one who picks them up when they're down when they're under hardships he's always the one that they can lean on or look to for support or motivation yeah um, and you can see why he's like you say he's a charmer he's really well spoken he knows the right words to say at the right time, and he knows how to. I won't say play people, but he knows how to kind of um, I think appeal to them. Yeah, appeal to their better sides and appeal to their uh, sense of belonging. Cause, because I mean, these these people are very much kind of from broken homes, or they're from they're all damaged orphans, people. Or, really. Yeah, they're all damaged, and it's just a group of damaged people to become one whole entity, yeah. which is Brand the Dutch Van der Linde gang. Yeah, completely. Um, and I, I really like Dutch because this game starts where. He seems very charming and he's very nice, and he is that uh, kind of charismatic, enigmatic leader that you know you'd, you'd expect of yeah, I, somebody who has this family. I, I felt myself like falling for his words, oh, and yeah, then he kind of remind us of no, I, you know where this is going. Exactly, you know exactly what it's like, and I, I like at the start of the game. There's there's rumors and some talk of him starting to crack. And it is that like over the course of the game, it is that kind of how he unravels as his his philosophical view on like freedom and the wild west and creating a good life where they can do what they want yeah. is being completely eroded by the the encroaching civilization of Absolutely. America. Absolutely, it's it's the it's the twenty it's, well the twentieth century I should say that's uh, catching up and yeah he doesn't know how to deal with it and it's it's that crumbling of the idea is a big factor in his uh, downfall. Yeah, um, and I think he's he's. Great character. I mean, there's there's loads of characters. There's there's Hosea, who's kind of Dutch's. Uh, I don't know. He he kind of is co leader with him. Like, yeah, they they both started the gang, I believe. They both kind of uh, they met by. I think they're trying to rob each other, and then they became best friends, and then they started the gang. That's like, kind of how it happened. Hosea is slightly more refined. He's more of a straight con man who doesn't get involved with the kind of rougher edge. Yeah. But he's older and not maybe as capable as he used He's to older, be. he's wiser, he's often the sense of reason. Yes. He, he's caution and reason and, and uh, Dutch is more firebrand than him. Yeah. Um, but he's also not as charismatic and he, and he isn't who people ultimately follow. Because yeah. I think the, the, the harder edge of the gang very much follow Dutch because he can get involved with that side of things. He yeah. can get involved with the train robberies and the, the bank robberies where yeah. his here tends to run distraction and things like that yeah he runs the side missions which is kind of well you perceive very low risk and but it's just as important it's yeah it's the subtle and, and it's it's the art of the con really isn't yeah. the long con that he plays but uh, Jose is a great character as well I think. yeah he's I, re- I like everybody in the film yeah. like, even the people I don't really like very much so you've got is it Pearson Mr. Pearson who's the cook who's this, I this, did like him he's just kind of this fat useless kind of guy <laughs> See, at the beginning years, but then I think later on he kind of comes into his own. The only one I didn't really like was probably Reverend Swanson, but at the end, yeah. there's redemption for him. You know what? I, I had this conversation with somebody else as well, where it's saying like he just feels like he's a bother through the game. Um, and you, you're right, how things wrap up for him. I was like, you know what? That's quite nice. Uh, in a way, like it's just it, it has a nice little arc to it. Yeah. Um, I, I, this is the thing everyone grows there's there's no one that's kind of the same from the beginning at the end that I can think of everyone changes yeah. whether it's for the better for the worse but they what happens what transpires through the game has an impact and um, yeah that's I mean even the women there's quite a lot of women in this game yeah and they are not side characters they're, no no they're very much one of them is it's almost the enforcer within the camp yeah Oh Miss, God, yeah, Miss Grimshaw. Miss Grimshaw. So I, I just she was kind of just there for the most part uh, in the camp. Yeah. She didn't, but there's parts of the game where she comes to the forefront. She's 
fucking tough as hell. Yeah, like I get she's the, almost like the, the woman Dutch Vanderlyn. I get the impression that when she was probably a younger woman, she probably was out on raids with the rest of the gang, and now that she's an older matron type kind yeah. of figure, matriarch, just, absolutely. Yeah, she just fucking rules that camp like a like you know she she's like a member of the Gestapo or something. She just <laughs> whips all the other women into secret shape. police. Yeah, um, yeah, because whenever they um, do anything, Dutch is always speaking to Pearson, who's in charge of supplies, and then Miss Grimshaw, who's in charge of. Like, I don't know authority. authority yeah basically and she whips people in the shit. and yeah without spoilers there's some things she does where it's just like fuck she she just does not fuck around at all <laughs> um, but then you've got like uh, I mean we mentioned Tilly who's the young, uh, young young black girl who's kind of like I think she's a former slave she was a slave and she escaped but she's still running from her past in yes ways. I think she she's had doings with um, gangs who are form, from former slaves yeah. who still feel like they've got a claim on her um You've got uh, Karen and oh the other girl. So Karen's the blonde girl, and the other girl name is Mary Beth. Mary Beth, um, who you kind of get the impression they're probably like former whores. Uh, like I think Mary Beth absolutely pickpocket uh, type, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, seductresses. Yeah, and like especially Karen. Mary Beth's probably a bit more of a quieter character, but Karen is isn't in a lot of missions all the time. But when she is, she's proper like bold and brassy. And yeah. I fucking really like Karen and she's like she's like yeah she's a, she's a fun girl to have around um, so they all play a prominent role and then you've got um, Sadie Adler who comes into it very early in the game she's not part of the gang to start with but um, Sadie's probably the better character out of all of these like she, yeah. she's fucking awesome she's amazing uh, yeah and the, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they are planning on doing some kind of DLC that you might even play as her and I'd quite I like that. that. I, I I could see that happening. Uh, I think she's a really she again. She's got a really good arc. It's not just a token strong woman character as well. Like there's there's reasons for her to be like that. Oh yeah, her I mean, behavior and everything is just really <coughs> uh, like you, you could attribute it to a woman and what she's gone through. Yeah, she has a reason for doing it. She's she's got a really like sad story, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, she's she's great. And to be honest, uh, and like I've got the the game sitting over there. She's uh, she's printed on the disc. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. like the, the, the art. Ah, which one? That's the other thing. It's the the disc you play as. <laughs> um, and I was like, is this hinting towards something? But it, like, you know, I don't. For the first two thirds of the game, she's kind of. So for the first third, she's very much a background character. Yeah. But for good reason, for story yep. reasons, and uh, and then in the middle third, she starts coming into it, and then by the the latter like, part of the game, she's very much a prominent character. She's, as, as much as the men, in terms of oh, like when they're going out and completely doing manly stuff. And but but like because of that like lack of presence in the in at least in the mainline story in the first half, I was like, why is she printed on the uh, the cover? Because like she's not very prominent. But this is such a long game; it took yeah. me a lot longer to catch up and realize. Oh yes, she's in it. I fucked her, and she's and she's, yeah. she's great. Um, probably the character we haven't mentioned who I really like but for probably the wrong like I love to hate is Micah who is ah, like he's he's a very capable outlaw which is what's frustrating about him because he, he, he is good at what he does but he's fucking awful at the same time he's like, probably uh, I'd say he's very much like Dutch but he's almost like the bad bits of Dutch. He's the devil sitting on Dutch's shoulder. Yeah. Whereas Arthur is more like the angel. Or Arthur voice and, of reason. Yeah, the voice, and, and Hosea. Um, yeah, Mike is fucking awful. He's like he's he's got this like slimy southern drawl, and he's just not very nice. Like, yeah, you can't see, but my blood is boiling. <laughs> I'm getting red faced. But I really I like him. He's, We'd love to hate him. I guess. Yeah, I, and I, I was like, God, I I can't. Like, I do not like this guy, but he's he's, he's a useful member of the gang because yeah. he is capable. And, and he does antagonize Arthur frequently. <clears throat> yes. And it's, it's not even on during missions. It's just you walk around camp, he'll just, he'll make a very quick comment and you think, you motherfucker, you know what I mean? He doesn't contribute very much in terms of like the runner of the camp. He sits there and goes on jobs. And he's, I'm sure he's a very new member of the gang. He's only been in for a few months. Well, there's a lot of, like, early on in the game, it's like the, the game opens with, the, the gang on the run into the mountains and, and through a storm and like the, the opening chapters the game's divided into six chapters and uh, the opening chapter is basically a tutorial where you're learning the ropes of the game in this snowstorm and you're trapped up and you're trying to survive and it's all taking place because you, a, a job in Blackwater which is a town in the first game has gone horribly wrong and it, it, it suggests early on that 
the Jose and Arthur didn't want to go through with the job because it didn't feel right and it was Micah's idea. It was Micah who was the uh, master behind it or the brains behind it. And, and it he went... somehow got Dutch to come along with it. Yeah, and it definitely feels like as Dutch is maybe starting to crack, he's starting to look towards what Micah stands for rather than what he stood for traditionally yeah. and what the likes of Arthur and Jose still believe in. Um, so he's a again like looking at the promo I didn't realise I thought I didn't know who he'd be or anything like that he wasn't put, but he's a he's a significant character and he's, uh, he's fucking awful he's the, probably the closest thing to a villain even though he's your friend technically yeah. uh, he's, he's great like I really like him but he's yeah. a right bastard <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely but uh, I mean Chris we probably brought through the majority of them I mean you've got John Mars in this part of the gang John Mars and Abigail well. his wife his long yep. suffering wife yep and their son Jack yeah, I quite like Jack. Jack as a boy is, is really cute, actually. He's the cutest <laughs> thing ever. And there's, there's some great missions where you got to spend time with him. as Uncle yeah, Arthur. Yeah, right. Uncle Arthur, yeah. He's like bonding with the boy. It's it's really nice because, like, I suppose John Marsden as well, you see him, he's kind of like this. He, he's trying In the first game, he's trying to make up for his past sins and, and basically rescue his family, yeah. essentially. In this one, he it opens up where Jack's still very young. He's John's only recently rejoined the gang after having abandoned it for a year. Yeah, um, and he won't even acknowledge Jack as his like legitimate son. He kind of keeps his distance. I think this is all coming on top of him. Is he's, he's all he's ever known is just running, killing, conning, looting, and all of a sudden he has to take responsibility now. He's got a wife. Well, he hasn't got a wife. Sorry. He's, uh, well, he's got I, a lady. I, I get and the impression they they're, they're married by Dutch, and yeah. not officially, because she's called Abigail Roberts. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's comments made in the game where it's like, you ain't even married. It's like, we are. Or like, oh, we're not married properly. And yeah. Like, good enough. Uh, we're, we're, we're together. That's enough. And then John's obviously got a son as well. And it's, I think it gets too much for him. And like you say, he abandons his family. And it, it's like he doesn't, rather than make a, rather than muddle through it and do a bad job, he just doesn't want to bother. Yeah. Because he doesn't want that responsibility. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it is that. He just doesn't trust himself to do a good enough job. So he thinks maybe the family's, better off without him I mean John as well he's a bit like Arthur I get the impression he's a slightly younger version of Arthur in yeah the, they were uh, when they were brought together by Dutch they were like brothers almost it feels like Arthur would have been like 16 and, and John would have been 12 or something yeah. like that like Arthur definitely feels older whether he's meant to be I don't know I think I, so I think he is but um he definitely feels like that that older brother to, to John Marsden but I get the impression Arthur's a little bit sharper and a little bit more capable than yeah. John but John's just kind of fucking tough. Like, he's just resilient. Yeah. Like, nothing ever gets him. And he, he has, like, the worst fucking luck across this game. It's yeah. It's just terrible. And, like, everything always happens to him. And he's got the most to lose out of everybody because he's got a family. Yeah. And, like, just, yep, he, he keeps goes, on He trucking. goes through hell, absolutely. On, on numerous occasions. I mean, like, even the opening parts of the game, uh, he doesn't he doesn't start this game very well. Um, you know, he starts in a, in a sorry state, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah it, it's it's funny yeah, John just feels like this slightly dumber version of Arthur but probably tougher in a weird way or luckier like all this bad shit happens to him which is unlucky and he always says like oh Arthur you're always saying I'm lucky but I'll look at all the shit that happens to me but nothing ever really touches him no. at the same time he goes through it, all it sorts of shit it definitely leaves scars oh god yeah yeah but it, nothing ever really uh, takes it down for the count <laughs> so, yeah. and it's weird because you kind of think Wait, he's, he's not supposed to die here. And you just think all this shit happening to him? Like it's, it's almost a spoiler playing through the game because you know inevitably John's going to be fine. Nothing's going to happen. But you still go through a lot. You think, wow, this is this is crazy, man. You'd yeah. be surprised if they didn't rewrite anything. Actually, yeah, this is it. This is where he dies or something. Oh, it's definitely. Um, so, I mean, that that's the, the, the casting. That probably, I think we've skirted around spoilers and stuff. As best Tried as, as best can. you can. Um, so... I think generally the, the the story, I think the story is it, uh, what I would say is probably it feels more like a novel than a movie. It feels more like a, a novel or a, a series or a f even a few seasons yeah. of a se of a TV program. It's long. Um, it's very very varied and big in scope. It it takes some unexpected turns in yeah. terms of setting and uh, and what happens la especially later on. Yeah. Um, but it's very well told. It feels like a very, very good HBO series or something it's, like that. It's phenomenal. I really, I really liked it. And like I say, even though you know inevitably what happens <laughs> or what will eventually happen, uh, just taking that journey is really well done. Yeah, because I mean, we say it, it generally it, it subverts our expectations, but at the same time, 
Uh, some characters do have plot armor because of this being a prequel. Yep. But uh, even what happens to those, it's like, oh, that, that's far more interesting than I probably could have come up with as an idea to do with them. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's really genuinely good. It's 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 one of the better stories I've ever played through in a video game, and it's definitely what's stuck with me, having played through the game now. I more think the the, the the emotional high points are definitely the bit that's stuck with me and I did not expect that going into a cow you know was it rooting a two, cowboy, cowboy, cowboy shooting, shooting two cowboy shooting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 and I didn't even even playing the game in the, like for the first couple of hours I'd never expected it to have such an, um, an emotional impact as it did uh, seeing calling back to like The Last of Us probably is the last time I ever felt anything like that in a video game yeah uh, and it, it's great like the, the story is very well told it's very well presented the characters are very very deep and, and robust and most of them if not all of them go through some kind of arc and have a purpose to them um, and I don't think we can I don't think there's anything the one criticism maybe is it maybe drags towards the back half I think that's a problem with a lot of Rockstar games though I think the last third or the last kind of part it just seems to take a nosedive in terms of um, <clears throat> where it's going what it's doing like it, it, it has a point and it just struggles to know how to get there like everything at the, be- at the beginning yeah at the beginning in the middle is fine and then at the end you just kind of think oh, I just needs a bit of tidying up it, it goes on a bit too long so this I said this game is divided into six chapters and chapters one to four are fantastic very well paced I would say very varied and interesting every chapter has a different setting and focus of what it's about um, and then chapter five kind of goes off on, a, on an unexpected but not unwelcome tangent. It's interesting what they do because I did not expect what it does in oh, that yeah. chapter. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't just incorporate that strange little detour. It, it goes on afterwards, which maybe lasts a bit long. And then chapter six introduces a whole other batch of uh, subplots that didn't need to be there. And by the time I hit chapter six, I was very much mainline and as much of the quest, a main quest line of yeah. the story as I could, just to see how it unfolded and it, it does go on a little bit too long um, I think chapter 6 end. back into chapter 6 it does I mean th- there are some gems in there absolutely but it overall it's it's it feels more of a marathon and you just, yes. you just you just want to be sprinting through it and it's not the best way really I think the the, the, the quests that are about finishing characters arcs and bringing the story to a conclusion are fantastic but there's a lot of a lot of bloat in there yeah. and, and maybe it's not even bloat but by then you, I was about 60, 70 hours into this game and I was just like it, I'm, t- I'm, I'm ready to finish and move on there's, there's lots of other stuff it's that time of the year where there's a lot of other stuff coming out yep. um, and I just want to move on not because I'm not having fun just because you know I, I, I find it hard to play the same game for like weeks and weeks at a time especially if it is this kind of single player linear thing um, I just wanted to get it done and then I can go back a later date and do all the side stuff I missed if I am so inclined yeah. but I want to finish the story and chapter 6 yeah because it. I mean by chapter 6 you, it, the story is very much in you its teeth is very much kind of sunken into you you don't I never felt the um, compelling of uh, trying to do side quests or wanting to do anything else I just wanted like you say just to get through the story yeah. I, I very much just thought you know what a lot of things happen a lot of kind of side quests pop up a lot of blimps come up on the map a lot of Opportunities are available to you, but you just think, nah, I'm going <coughs> to forsake all that and continue. Yeah, completely. Um, I missed out a lot of, of the, you've got your stranger missions where you just yep. want random characters, and they're a mixed bag, I think it's fair to say. Some are very good, others are, um, yeah, they're a bit kind of just bizarre or strange, I'm not that interested and uh, yeah, I, I skipped a lot of them towards the back end of the game, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd probably uh, say the story is story's very good. I think it's one of the strong points of this, and how it's presented is very, very strong as well. Um, I suppose in t- talking about presentation as well, I'd say it's fair to say this game is a looker. Yeah, it's it's incredible what they've done with the Rage Engine uh, on this gen because this is a, this is the first proper game on this gen. I mean, yes, they released GTA Five, but it was a re-release, and they've added some stuff to it. They've added kind of um, more atmosphere, lighting, better lighting, better frame rate, but it's still very much a pre a last gen game. You can't yeah. expect them to re-release or redo everything from the ground up, but this is. Everything here is completely next gen, and when I say that, I'm talking about the look, the feel, uh, the scope, the size, the scale, and the lighting and the weather effects it's, are just incredible. It shouldn't, yeah, a game, shouldn't be this good. A game on this be, scale shouldn't be this good. Like this game looks better than a lot of uh, linear games with like very handcrafted 
uh, so you know, sing, the very linear settings, handcrafted linear. Yeah. I, I suppose really this is that kind of level of detail, but on a grand scale, like everything does feel like very expertly crafted. I mean, with GTA Five, you kind of have the main city, which is very well detailed, and everything kind of has its place, and it's got very distinguishable parts. But then you have the giant mountain to the north, and I think that's where it kind of loses itself in that there's nothing really there to pull you there. There's little it's towns and cities, Kobe's but side. I mean, just giant fucking motorways that you just drive through. Mm. There's no ever incentive to think, you know, I'm just going to jump off here, see what's down here. Whereas in here, you, you don't have that. I mean, there's no cars to be going with. Yeah. Uh, but there's, you have a complete diversity of biomes, I suppose is kind of the way of saying it. Yeah, completely. Um, different uh, cities, sizes of cities, people in those cities, um, how they look, how they feel, how they talk, how they dress even. Yeah, it actually is. And I found myself dressing for the occasion as well. Yeah, and, and dressing takes an important part. That's one of the gameplay elements. If you go to the cold mountainous regions, you need uh, fur coats, you need big coats, you need a hat to keep you warm. Mm. Uh, if you don't, you suffer detrimentally from uh, weather effects. And the inverse happens if you go to a hotter climate, if you go into like a desert or... Um, yeah, you need to take that coat off. Yeah, cactus areas, you need to take that coat off again. has a detrimental effect on you. Yeah, and the yeah, yeah, this game is just a look at everything about it is it, it just looks fantastic. And I I played it on PlayStation Pro. I don't know what you played it on. Well, I'm a peasant. I've only got the original <laughs> PlayStation. Right? Yeah. And still, I'm assuming it still looks pretty good. It, it's it's phenomenal. Some of the missions, I mean, some of the missions are set pieces just to display how good this engine can look and yes. how the light can be. And I think what this engine does very well is uh, characters and character models as well, and how it, how they animate. Everything has a weight to it. Everything looks good. The people, uh, it's the cutscenes that uh, and, and the character models within them and how they look. Uh, in terms of just like the subtle facial features and, and how eyes move, yeah, I think it's top top tier here. It looks yeah. fantastic. Even, uh, it looks so natural. One of the other mechanics is the beard, and in a lot of games you find like the, the kind of cut corners. You can see like they'll attach a beard to the neck so that when they look up, you can see the beard <laughs> remaining the static on the neck or something like that. And uh, but here, it looks and it feels. It moves in the wind. It kind of moves as they talk, and it, it has an yeah. impact as you move around and you as you see it from different angles, like. It's done. It's been done in Uncharted as well. But another thing I liked was like the the sun goes through the cartilage in the ears and things like that. Yeah. And Rockstar has always been phenomenal uh, with the little things. Yeah, and it, I just think with I suppose what I feel about this game is it feels like it's a game that almost is almost at odds with itself. It feels like it, it's all about detail and very very kind of crafted single player, very curated experiences. But again, it's the backdrop of this ridiculously detailed open world. Yeah. Um, but like in terms of how it looks, like everything just looks superb. Like cloth and clothes move very realistically. Um, all the, like horses are expertly detailed. You know the the testicles shrink in the in the call. <laughs> You know, all that, all that, this stupid fucking details. Um, but that's what the, that's what I think that's what sets them out from every other open world free roaming game. Yeah, because every other free roaming game is is very much yeah. You, let's say you've got powers, as in the case of Infamous or even Spider Man. Um, you're always kind of zipping around. You're not really taking in your environment all too much. Whereas here, you're very much grounded. You can only really move by horse or on foot. Um, so everything has to kind of have an impact on you. Everything has to seem like you would do in real life, and it has to. Uh, feel real and I think it does and like I say with the uh, the little effects I remember in GTA 5 like you wear flip flops and it would have a very realistic flip flop it like it would stick to the ground and then make a nice uh, impact to your feet and there's like this, there's loads of YouTube videos just like the X number of crazy things added into GTA 5 and they yeah. start to come through on Red Dead Redemption now and Rockstar is phenomenal about that and I think it's yeah. the aggregate of all those little games that makes a difference I think if you added one or two into a game it would make nothing but it's just that you've got all these little things you, you kind of find yourself thinking wow I can't believe that I did that in yeah like all bases are covered everything every, every everything that's in the game has had a pass over right? how to make what, what's some little details we can put in this to make yeah. it look better you, you can imagine some meetings where they're just like we need a day just to think how we're going to make this tree better how would well, it be that's it trees be? all move when you touch them like if they're like little fronds or whatever they, they'll they bend over, bend as you over they'll give way they'll them. give weight and stuff to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy it, I, it's, remember, I remember going like Rocky Mountains and uh, kind of slipping on the I don't want to say the asphalt but kind of the Rocky equivalent and as you fall down it's because there's like a mini landslide yeah. there behind you I know uh, Uncharted 4 did that as well I remember that yeah I remember seeing the tech videos but like it, when you're in the mountains as well the, uh, the snow defamation when you like just 
tromping through the, the the heavy snowfall, especially in the beginning of the game. Yeah, everything just looks very realistic at how it how the snow is like indented and stuff. And you can track animals by their tracks in the snow. Yeah, uh, you can track animals anywhere by using a, a special ability you have called focus. I think. Where yeah, it's it's almost like. Um the alive eye rather than the dead eye yeah <laughs> it's pretty much it's, yeah it's, you're looking at things that are alive and uh, things that are alive um, flash out and they kind of they leave a trail I mean it's almost like a, a scent trail yes. you leave a scent trail if you move you can see your scent trail doing and you can cover that down it has an impact on the animals that you might be hunting around you but uh, when it's snowing you can still see the, the you can see the uh, the footprints in the snow yeah um, and the snow seems to you know, it just it, it, it's just very. And what's weird is it's very detailed, and it's only used in one part of the game, and that's the very, very <laughs> beginning. Because the whole point of the first part of the game is you're in a storm and it's snowy and it melts, so you can get up the mountains. Yeah, and uh, I think the idea of using snow at the beginning is 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 great because you want it to be a canvas for a tutorial, and I think a lot of um, tutorials and games they put you in uh, almost like a simulation where it's kind of white it's gridded mm. and you need to focus on your objective because it's a tutorial that's what it's supposed to do it's supposed to say okay here's this guy you can see him clearly there's nothing other gubbins around that's going to block him you know go yeah. and kill him you put down the real world by having snow snow is kind of the white canvas it, everything sticks out whether you're hunting yeah. something whether you're hunting um, real people whether you're collecting stuff you're following a path in the snow, the path is laid, like you say, it's laid out for you. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's why they did it in the snow. And it, it works really well as a tutorial. And it creates this fantastic atmosphere. Like, as you see, the light in the snow and everything looks really good, especially at night. It creates these kind of beacons and it all it all filters very Flex well. Off the and snow and, it, yeah. it, it looks fantastic. I think just across the board, I mean, there were some pictures launched before it came out of animals. And I was like, that, that just looks like a fucking picture of a fox. And it was a <laughs> screenshot of the fox. And it, it just looks, it, it's just stupid how much detail has gone in the game. And it is very, a, a great look. Like, fur looks really good on clothes, on animals. Um, the, as you see, there's different biomes. There's, like, the, the swamps and the bayous of Louisiana. There's the kind of heartland of Montana, which is where a lot of the game takes place. There's more mountainous regions. Yeah. There's, like, the Appalachians, uh, where yeah. it's all, like, sweaty mountains and hills in the heat. Uh, there's desert. Uh, yeah. There's there's all sorts. It, it it's far more varied than the first game, which yeah. was all kind of like dusty I desert. Think in terms of just biomes, it's probably the most varied game. I mean, GTA had some variants, even though you kind of um, in a city, uh, it still had kind of um, mountainous regions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And desert regions. It takes what GTA Five did and, and really runs with it. Right, wraps it up. It's it's weird because like GTA, you spend a lot of time in cities, and that's where it feels kind of the most alive. Whereas here, I found the cities to feel very oppressive because you're used. Yeah, to I didn't spend all much. Time. I was only going to the city to do the basic stuff to help me go back out into the mountains and do my shit there. And you know, from what I hear, I talk to other people about this there's a shit ton to do in the cities there's like so much stuff you will miss if you don't wander around and explore oh, and yeah. I've missed so I, much there's some huge cities in there as well and yeah. you, can, you can absolutely imagine that it's uh yeah it, it, it feels like it takes the principles of what Grand Theft Auto had in terms of like country and, and town um, almost flip them to make the country where you feel at home and the yeah. town's the alien place um, it feels comparable to like Witcher 3 which had like Novigrad and stuff like that big cities it feels comparable to that yeah again it's Novigrad, the big city, you spend a lot of your time there, but I think I, I remember a lot more going out and doing the quests on this and the, kind of the abandoned ruins or the mountains or yeah. the valleys. And this is where you take most of your pain. And it's, the game does a good job of doing that because a lot of the um, side quests and uh, a lot of the animals that you can hunt, like the legendary animals, which are the uh, apex predators yeah. and apex deers or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Um, are hidden out in the country and you have to go and find them and it's not like you have to go to the city and find out where they are and a blimper comes up in your map you have to go out and explore and that's what it encourages explore and as part yeah. of exploration is discovery and there's a lot of things to discover here and a lot of things to take in yeah yeah completely I mean uh, there's, there's loads to do with this and I suppose that probably brings us on the gameplay I think in terms of how it looks this game is a pretty game um, probably some things that are worth saying is that Rockstar fucked up the, uh, HDR Oh, really? I'll have to uh, uh, take your word. The game looks better without it. They implemented it in such a way that it just washes things out. Oh. Uh, I, do, I, I don't know the technical side of it. All I know is that it basically makes everything whiter rather than like different colours, more varied colour palette. Uh, so it's better to turn it off. Um, Gosh. No word on a fix either. And at this point, I don't think they're going to bother. I mean, this must be the PS4 version because a lot of 
uh, online reviewers have said the Xbox One is like the definitive edition. Well, well that's what I was. Uh, so the Xbox One X is by apparently not that I've played it, but apparently it is by far and away the better looking version. It's the only game that has really made use of what the the Xbox One X can do. Apparently, uh, the you know PlayStation Four version looks fucking good. I think. Oh, it's not to uh, do anything to detriment it. It's whatever version. I'm sure even the Xbox One version and the PS4 version base are. Uh, Absolutely fine. I'm sure they are, um, but apparently the Xbox One X is the the version to play if yeah. you're going to get this game. Okay, cool. um, but yeah, apparently HDR is just botched. They've implemented <laughs> such a way that it doesn't make sense to use it. Goodness me! Um, which seems weird because I don't know. It's not a new thing anymore. No, no. It's it's been done. I think really well by uh, Horizon. Yes. Yeah. Really good. Um, most most first party big releases have it now. Some games Taking look better than others, stuff, yeah. but as yeah, Horizon looks really good with it. Um, but yeah, it I, I I was playing with it on and it looked fine. But then when I was starting to read articles and it said we we suggest you turn it off, and I did. And I was like, oh yeah, things do look more. Better. Things do look better. They don't have this kind of like you don't notice it when it's on until you've turned it off. But it was a kind of like a white gloss like over thing. Yeah. Um, it was it was weird when I turned it back on. I was like, yeah, I'll turn this back off. So it, it's it's disappointing because I mean. I, Horizons are almost a comparable game in just terms of the environment and the mm. um, setting as well. Uh, it's very colourful. You've got the different regions, you've got the snow, snowy regions and the colourful kind of desert regions and the yeah. forestry regions. So oh, I, did, I had no idea about that. Yeah, so, the, you know, but it's it's still a fantastic looking game and it runs, I think, in a fairly stable 30 frames. Yeah. I, di- I didn't notice any drops, but I'm No, I, I think I went a bit ham and started destroying everyone in sight and that's when I had like bodies in a particular shack that was stacking up and it started to <laughs> Chug. take a bit of a ch- chugging and my uh, fans started worrying but you kind of kind of forgive it just give it the scale of the game yes. and you're not really ever given the incentive to do something like that that was just very much to me just being an ass basically I, I wouldn't be surprised as well if we're if we're only one or two years away from the next consoles which we i think we it's starting to stack up that we probably are um i, I imagine the next few consoles now will just be it i i, I can't see what they can do now in terms of it's only things that are just running faster and looking better. There's nothing in terms of like maybe polygons and a jump like yeah. from the PS1 to the PS2 to the PS3. You're never going to get that jump anymore. No, we're at that point. But I wouldn't be surprised if they re-release Red Dead Redemption Two uh, on that. Oh, I'd be, I'd be very, to coincide with maybe a PC version, which is inevitably going to happen. It, it'd be yeah. ridiculous if it doesn't come out on PC. I, I imagine, yeah, yeah they will re-release this for the next gen, okay, and I'll probably get it. <laughs> I yeah. didn't think I'd get it from the. I didn't think I'd get GTA, uh, but I did. That I'm yes, glad I did. Of <laughs> course, I did. Fuck you, Rockstar. God damn. Um, Back to gameplay, though. Yeah, um, so I think game, gameplay. We've we've touched on bits of it already. Um, I think the gameplay is going to be what makes or breaks this game for a lot of people. I think it's it's very divisive because this very much yeah. feels like a game where Rockstar had a very specific vision of how they wanted it to play, and you know if you don't like it. Fuck you. That's what we went with. Yeah. Um, it's it's very, like you say, weighty. Uh, it's very... People use the word sluggish, but I don't know if that's the right word to use. And there have been kind of posts and suggestions to kind of increase the sensitivity and to invert cameras to give it that less um, weighty feel to make it a bit more arcade uh, Like, I if you play the original Red Dead, uh, it, it plays differently. Does it? Yeah, uh, it's I, a long time since I've played it, so I, I couldn't really tell. It, it does uh, I don't think it's a bad thing I think it's like you say it's the way Rockstar want you to play and I think it's almost a more realistic way of playing and, for, and a good example of this is revolvers I think if, in GTA 5 if you compare it you have uh, a reticle yeah um, and you aim and it will always be largely towards that reticle there wouldn't be kind of much in terms of spread yeah Whereas this game, you pick a revolver, you aim, <coughs> you have your reticle, and then you have an outer circle. Yes. And what happens is the outer circle then contracts towards the reticle, and as it's contracting, if you take a shot, it's then fair game anywhere within that circle. Yeah, it can So you have to wait, aim, pull back the hammer, and then wait for the reticle to get the kind of snapshot of the shot that you yeah, want. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot slow paced, and I think that's it creates this kind of feeling of, 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 the, of Western guns. It's a bit like uh, in Unforgiven, where Clint Eastwood's 
character is deadly not because he's fast it's because he keeps calm and just aims where other people are panicking and trying to get shots off and I found this game if you just slow yourself down yeah. take your time you will be far more dangerous there's always bullets and um, ricochets and things going around um, a lot of people are kind of yelling stuff at you and you, it's easy to get lost in and just wanting to run and gun but you don't have to it's, it's very easy to just like you say keep calm that you, you might get shot here and there but if you keep calm you largely come out the victory in yeah. 9 times out of 10 and uh, yeah, this this is, I think as a whole, this game is a, has got a lot slower pace of gameplay than a lot of people will be used to. It takes its time, especially from Rockstar. Yeah, it wants you to absorb the world. It's far more of a role playing game than I think they've done before. I would surprise me if yeah, if they release it for well, I don't say release it, but if they had some RPG element in there, because of, yeah, like you say, it's, it's it, it it brings back a lot of the things that you had in uh, San Andreas where you can lose weight or gain weight if you eat too much or too little <laughs> yeah. and they have statistical effects so, like if you go skinny you uh, lose a bit of health but you gain a bit of stamina and it's the vice, it's the opposite if you get fat yeah. um, and if you stay average you then you get the best of balance both basically yeah. um, you don't get a detriment or a bonus you just stay in the middle um, It's uh, there's a lot of gameplay elements like that it, it, it borrows a lot of survival gameplay elements like food yeah um you know, clothing that like you mentioned before, you've got to wear coats in hot, cold weather. It's a and very light survival game. It's, I, it, it's it, it there, does, it's, yeah, but, but it, doesn't, it doesn't, it's not kind of the overarching thing or the main theme going through it. You're never going to um, not play a survival game and feel out of touch with this. It still feels like a uh, Red Dead Redemption GTA 5 Rockstar game um, and with these additional uh, elements to it, like you say, with survival, it gives you incentive to kind of. Uh, like you say, go out to the forest and hunt yeah. down a deer, and I mean, the world has a tangibility to it. I think what akin to something like a Bethesda game, like Elder Scrolls, or something where a lot of items have like a very physical tangibility in the world, uh, and the world is set itself has a, a much greater tangibility on you. So you could, you know, the weather affects you, your hunger affects you. Uh, you've got to think about supplies and stuff before you go out. I mean, this is these things you only really have to think about a lot in the early parts of the game when you haven't got a lot of these things. Yeah, you get you definitely get to a point where you've just got so much of everything you don't have to give a shit unless you really want to. Yeah, um, but early on it, it has um, an impact. Oh, like cool. one of one of the very early missions, you're uh, looting a house uh, that yeah. you've killed out of. Uh, that's one of the first points that I realised you're going first person mode actually. Yeah, well, I was going to say they brought back the first person mode from GTA 5. Which is, like, I had no idea. It surprised the fuck out of me, man. I'd heard before, but I, I must admit I haven't really used that much as well, but it is useful in some For, instances. One of the elements is you can walk into a house and if there's cupboards, if there's wardrobes, if there's chests, you can open them and inside there may be a can of beans or there may be some ammunition or there may be something you can sell to a fence. Um, playing first person mode is much easier to look around and to yeah, loot things I can imagine that actually I've not something I've done but I can completely imagine that but like comparing this to something like a Bethesda game all those items have a physical presence on a table in a drawer yep. you've got to open drawers individually and pull things out yep. uh, and put them in your thing it's, even, it's like, even picking up off corpses um, like GTA <laughs> is you'd, you'd run and you'd pick up the ammo you'd pick up the money you could pick up the gun as well whereas here I think you only automatically pick up the ammo yes Everything else, you have to stand over the um, body, or the triangle key, uh, or the Y key. Um, you then loot the body, he picks up the body, kind of checks through his pockets. Yeah, completely. And yeah, it like turns the body over, goes through pockets, then puts it back down, and yeah. you get your item in your inventory. And I mean, that, that, that kind of slowness and that deliberate, everything's animated fully in, in, in a very, again, I keep using this word, but tangible way. Like everything, you're not just picking up, not doing a canned animation by picking up a body, you actually physically like lift and move that body. Yeah, the body doesn't go back in the same state as it was when it picked exactly. up. It's like, it's like I was saying before, this, the little things that they've kind of done. Completely. This. And that, that kind of uh, detail goes into things like hunting and, and when you hunt animals, you've got to skin them. You actually have to skin them. Like Arthur cuts the flesh open, pulls back, you know, rolls it over, cuts I, off the other side. I was trying to remind myself of Red Dead Redemption. I think it didn't show you. You just kind of saw a knife and some bloody mess. And then he'd have like a load of fur like a, like in his a, hand. A load of fur in his hand and a carcass on the floor. Here you see him putting the knife in the body, stripping away the outer layer, cutting away at the skin so it kind of separates it from the muscle yeah. and then you're pulling it off it's 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 quite gruesome to begin with <laughs> but by yeah. the end you're just used to it it's like yeah this is no problem I think I could probably go into a taxidermy now <laughs> just I just have no just be, yeah not phased just be okay it's yeah it, and it, it makes 
it makes you watch it every time you can't like skip it or fast forward it or anything like that. it's not like Far Cry where there's just like a, a single knife cut and then you lift up a load of fur and dump it into a bag and it's in your memory it is yeah. this very deliberate because even when you've skinned it Arthur's now holding a roll of fur and then you've got to walk over to your horse put it on the back of your horse take it somewhere to sell it yeah it's and you can only carry so much fur yeah, your horse can only carry so much as well. It can carry some fur, it can curry. Depending on the size, it can carry a carcass as well. And then larger animals take longer to skin. Yeah, and like a bear, for example, you can only carry one bear pelt, whereas you can carry three or four deer pelts. Um, there's a lot to think about. Yeah. Uh, it, and it, again, it's very slow. Place. Like hunting is something you do quite a lot early on just to get food for the camp. And it's so fucking involved as a side activity. I mean, once you've done it, that initial quest, you don't ever have to bother again. So if you don't like it, just ignore it. it you give yeah. a shit. But there's so many different animals. And, like, animals, different animals have different qualities. So you have to kind of sneak up on them and uh, inspect them to see if they are a three-star deer or a two-star or one. Um, and in order to sneak up on them in the first place, like we were saying before, they've got scent trails. So you follow them and you track them. And then you've got to, depend on the wind, you've yeah. got to scent. So you've got to approach you them from the right direction. You want to kind of give yourself away and you have to go down downwind and things like and, that. And then even if you manage to sneak up on a three-star deer and then get to it, you've got to kill it in the right way to not ruin the pelts. You can't just pepper it with shotgun pelts and ruin the coat. You have to get a bow and arrow and shoot it in the neck to kill it instantly. Um, and it's fucking involved as shit and like this this yeah. I don't know how many animals are on this game but there are a lot yeah I, I think it's 50 odd over 50 I think it might even be more than that because there's there's other um, I'm, I'm sure there's more than 50 because I'm still going around after maybe 100 hours <laughs> and still seeing animals that I haven't seen yet and there's birds I'm birds yeah fucking birds I've, I've, I haven't even touched birds yet I think I've got one that I, I actually yeah. hit with a horse I randomly <laughs> even got a bit too low that's the only one I've got. There's, there's loads of birds here, and there's uh, I'm sure there's eagles, ravens. Uh, I think it's ravens or crows that eat, eat off corpses as well. If you oh, leave really? a corpse to come back to it, there's like be ravens or crows. Or but there's like, there's different types of bears who behave differently. There's different types of deer. Um, there's just shit tons of animals in this game, yeah, and they all behave slightly differently. It's almost a game in its own right. Yeah, you could use this as a hunting simulator. Like one thing that is quite fun to do is just go off from like the gang for a couple of in-game weeks and yeah. just hunt and live off the land exploring. <laughs> it's really cool, and you can set up a camp when you go out and about. Yeah, that's like another mechanic. You have a camp, you have a tent. You can cook on the camp. You can uh, pick up flowers as well. That's the other thing in terms it's of like two whole, animals. Like, you've got herbalisms. Um, herbalisms. So. Yeah, you can. Uh, I, I was picking up thyme and then I was cooking it with um, a deer I killed and I was getting uh, a thyme venison steak nice. and that would kind of increase my uh, stamina and stuff even more so than a normal steak. There's there's so much shit in this game, it's, yeah. it's unreal and the thing that our original point was it's, it's all very involved, like the hunting is very involved, Every, everything is, it all involves like planning and knowing what you're doing and being yeah. efficient. Um, yeah, I, I mean the the gameplay is very slow we mentioned before as well there's a lot of weight to it like it feels like you tilt the stick and Arthur will start moving he'll, he'll start moving right away but it takes him a few seconds to kind of build up the momentum yeah. um, you will walk a lot in this game yeah. rather than run it feels weird to run around towns because everyone looks at you like everyone looks at you and run out of the way and just yeah like you say it, it just feels odd like you might have a a fast walk or a slow jog at the max but I, I've never run it just feels you feel the odd one out like you say if you started running around in town every, all eyes are on you like who the fuck is this guy running around and, and this game because of its like the level of atmosphere it has it, it makes you want to fit in and role play as Arthur in this world like yeah there was one bit where I was sprinting and I hit the saloon door and I just swung it open and it smashed open everyone in the saloon just went quiet and looked at me I was like oh shit and then just go back to drinking <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I think even the um Piano guy stopped. Yeah. I looked at me and he's like, all right, uh, back to the, the shanty that we were playing. Um, but it is very deliberate. And as we've talked about the guns as well, you mentioned like that kind of like slow, deliberate target and taking your time, placing your shots. Um, the the I, I didn't really have a big problem with the gunplay. I thought I, I like that kind. Of, I, I really enjoyed yeah. that kind of slightly it's, different. It's, it's a far cry though <coughs> from the other games and the Red Dead Redemption. And I guess what people are used to. It, it feels weird I think people maybe it sounds really pretentious and it's very much maybe a problem of the game but they're playing it wrong rather than trying to free aim what I would try to do is look in the direction of an enemy 
press R2 to lock onto them because yeah. it's very generous auto aim. Yeah. And then I would, in, my aiming would be fine tuning where I wanted to shoot them, whether it be in the head or the leg or the Well, hand. yeah, because you aim, you have theoretical to go down. And then I would ever so slightly push the right analog stick up to get the headshot. Yeah. And I was, by the end of the game, I was getting headshot after headshot. It just wasn't a problem. Yeah, like just chain them, like snap and bang, snap, yeah. bang. And, and you couldn't do that if you just. Uh, Firing, 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 like firing yeah. the hammer as it was. Yeah, com completely. Um, and it, it does feel like it's baked in some of the uh, the gunplay that Max Payne 3 had. Uh, yeah. It does like the bullet time kills every so often. Yeah, yeah, we've got the cinematic kind of camera. I yeah. thought it was really, you could turn that off if it's not for you, but there's some times where I was like, oh, I'm really glad it. It's like, um, well, that looks fucking painful. <laughs> yeah, I, one of my favourite ones was you can craft um, ammunition uh, at your mm. camp, so like you have with the food. One of the ammunitions I crafted was an explosive uh, round. Oh, and wow. It's just a, a normal round with animal fat and uh, some other bits and pieces. But when I shot it, I shot at some guy's head. It blew his head off. So you just see this guy on a horse. who's just like this headless cadaver, like a headless oh, horseman. God. And he was in a semi camera. And I was just like, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I liked the gameplay. It, it's sometimes maybe a little bit fiddly for its own good because of that weight. You know, sometimes you get you when you're trying to get it behind cover really quickly, it's it's slower than I'd like, and I get shot more than I would like. Yeah. But for the most part, I like that physical weight to it. I like how the guns handle it. it feels authentic to the setting. Yeah. Um, and I think once you get used to that kind of snapping and then fine tuning your aim, and as you say, it's no problem. You get yeah. to that point where it is just mechanical snap and then headshot. Yeah. Quick it's, flicks. It's, I mean, uh, if you find that too easy, I'm, I think you can turn off the lock assist or the aim assist. Uh, but I, it, it, I didn't feel kind of I needed to. It was, it was fine. It's almost like you say how they wanted you to play, and once you kind of used to it, it was, it, it wasn't a problem. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, like you say, at the very beginning, I found, um, I think I failed the, one of the early missions once or twice just because I couldn't get the gun gameplay in my head right. I was mm. trying to do things the old-fashioned way. And it wasn't working. It's only when you kind of calm down, take it easy, yeah, completely, and do things. And your teammates actually do shit. Like there's so many games yeah. where you have teammates. Like you, have, you almost have like an army behind you, and yet the only one getting kills. Whereas these guys, like there's a lot of times where I was trying to get in for a close kill, and I'd go into the other side of a shed or other side of a house, <laughs> and I'd get to the guy, and he's already been killed by somebody else. And yeah. you're like, oh wow, okay. Yeah, and I, I get the impression that unless you put the, the, a lot of your companions in extreme situations, they are fairly robust and they won't always die. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're not leaning on you. They're, a lot of these people can fend for themselves um, and it, it, it plays very well. You're almost glad to kind of have someone come with you. That's, that's probably the only thing I would have liked to have seen. I'd like to have gone to the camp and said, hey, uh, Charles, hey, Lenny, why do you come with me? Let's go tear up some shit. Yeah, that would have been good, actually. Um yeah, that 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 is probably one of the things that you can't do. A because lot of you can kind jobs. of do that. In, well, you can do that in GTA Five. You can ring up Trevor as um, you can, Franklin yeah. and say, "Yeah, let's go hang out." And if things take a turn for worse, you can just both like split and yeah, so, meet yeah. back later. Yeah, that that is something I never actually thought about that. But like, they do often have jobs that you can join them on, but you can't bring them on your own escapades. Yeah, uh, I, I think it would have been a nice little touch. And then there are things to do. You can rob stage coaches, you can rob trains and shops. Yeah, and you can rob individuals. Um, one of the things is when you lock onto someone, uh, you have an option to uh, oh. greet them. Hey, uh, mister. Be very pleased. Like, hey, stranger, or hi, howdy, mister. Um, the other one is to antagonize them. He'll just make a comment about their face. Like, what's, why, what's that beard on your face? And people get really pissed off, you know. I mean, it's not just initial things. So if I just make a quick comment to someone, they normally just tell me to uh, go away, mind my own business. But if I stick there and keep wailing on them verbally, they'll get physical. Whether it's with a gun, they'll aim a gun at you and say, right, you've had your fill now, off you go. Or they'll get physical, they'll pull out a knife or pull out their fists and yeah. come and take me down in a fight. Um, the other option is you can rob them so you can pull out your gun and they'll say right this is a robbery That's and then they'll you can also uh, some of that I, I, that I've missed out on for a long time you can fire your gun up in the air to warn, yeah. like, give people warning shots you can aim if you're uh, that's the mechanic with the, the police or the lawmen in this game so if you have a wanted level um, like in GTA 5 uh, you'll have uh, an area of influence where you will always be chased after no matter what so your incentive is to run away from that area You'll then have people chasing you and you want to level go down as long as you stay out of sight. Yeah. Um, so that's how you kind of escape from the law, but then you'll have a bounty. Yeah, which is kind of... It's, there's a few states in this game and your bounty's statewide. So as you yeah. say, if, 
if you're not being pursued actively, but you have a bounty, depending on how high that bounty yeah. is, bounty hunters come after you if you're in that area. Yeah. Um, and, oh my god, it's, it's not just one bounty hunter, it'd be a group of them. Yeah. It's almost like your gang, but they're bounty hunting gang and yeah. they're after you. So I, I like the wanted system in this game. As you say, it's very GTA 5 in terms of like, if you get, do something bad, you've got to escape that immediate area. There's a bit of stealth to it, you can hide. But that the consequences of it stay with you in terms of you have a bounty yeah. on your head. And if you're in an area where there's a bounty on your head, somebody might come after you. Yeah. But they also might not. And you might be able to get through there and do what you need to do and get out. And I suppose really the only, the only thing that it seems very easy, especially later on in the game where money's far less of an issue, um, it's easy enough to clear your bounties and never really worry about what you're doing. Yeah, I found I struggled to figure out how the bounty system worked because I had a, a large bounty in one of the early sit, uh, villages or towns early on, and it was it was through the story that I got this bounty. It wasn't anything of my doing. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, so how do I clear this? Do I hand myself in? And I tried handing myself in, and all they did was just take a bit of money from me, and my bounty was still there. I was like, what the hell? And then I uh, I tried dying. And my bounty was still there. I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on. As far as I know, you can only... Uh, you go to the post office. Post and, office, yeah. And say, obviously, of course. Can you imagine going to the Royal Mail now? They are, you know what, I'm wanted for murder. Let's just... That's 50 quid, let's just forget about all this. Yeah, it's 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 a weird weird situation, a weird <laughs> system. And that seems to be... I could be wrong, but that seems to be the only way to clear your bounties permanently. Yeah. Cause and the, the, the way of avoiding a bounty, which is kind of what I started talking about Lomond, was if you... Commit a crime, let's say you rob a stagecoach on the road and another horse rider passes by, he'll then become a witness. Yeah. And now it's up to you to either put him down so there's no witnesses, but then if you put him down, someone else could see you, that's another witness. Or oh, that happens. Yep. Several or, times. Yeah. Or what you could do is, like you say, you could point your gun in the air, fire off a shot, and then he'll stop in his tracks and you give him incentive. You can threaten them, can't you? You can like threaten them. I think you can uh, bribe yeah, them as well. You can them. give them money to just, you know, is a quid, a dollar, sorry. Which is, you know, maybe ten dollars in their real world money. Yeah. Let's just forget about this. What happened? And then he won't say anything, and you've got away scot free. You can also have a mask as well, but that's not a hundred percent foolproof. People will still yeah. know who you are. It, it's it's probably good if you're doing kind of quick robberies just to uh, reduce the chance of being spotted and uh, from the law kind of connecting the dots and realizing that it's Arthur Morgan. Yeah, no, it's 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 good. I, I like it because it. it it punishes you for doing bad things in the way Grand Theft Auto does, but it's not so intrusive or oppressive that you can't do. Your, you can't once you've had your fun, you can't just go about your business. You know, it's it's but it, and it's got longer term consequences that add a yeah. Bit of I mean, in GTA Five, you could have everyone on you, but if yeah. you manage to somehow get rid of it, you could just walk back out and you're like, "Yep, yeah, what's up? What's going on?" It, yeah, it, it feels, didn't really have a a, a consequence. Like yeah, it, it 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 does. It feels more in line with that RPG style that they seem to be going for with this game. Yeah, like Skyrim and the the wanted levels and the holes and yeah, stuff. completely. Um, I think it's something else as well we touched on is the the clothing system. So we talked about how you got to wear coats. Yeah. But, but just in terms of the depth and breadth of like that, the vanity systems because there's hair as well. Yeah. Um, it's it's fucking ridiculous. Like there's so many options and clothing styles and. Uh, I find myself caring about that stuff way more than I would like Not, to admit. I, more than I care about in real life. I yeah. mean, I've, I've worn this top for the best part of the week. Like, I don't really care, but Alpha Morgan, no, he's got a different change of clothes on his horse. Completely. And <laughs> I, I was wearing different clothes for different areas uh, to, to match the, the, the atmosphere and the style. Like, some things I was like, this this outfit doesn't match where it well. Yeah, if you go to a, a city, I, I was kind of prim and proper, like a suit almost. And if I went yeah. to a uh, a redneck town. I don't know if that's probably the right word to say, or just a kind of a very, a very wild western town. I was kind of quite dirty, quite drabby, quite trench coaty. Yes. Well, I start the game wearing like very much kind of like uh, rawhide waistcoats and like a, a, um, a duster. And then when we went to the south, I'd got a nicer waistcoat and some nicer trousers, but still wore kind of like a rugged outdoor coat. Um, and then when you're in the city, as you see, I'm dressing nicer again. Yep. In the mountains, wearing my big coats and the heavy boots and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, Arthur Morgan's got a nice, nice, yeah, nice he's, wardrobe. he's got a beard growing system as well, which is reminding me of uh, The Witcher. I was going to say, it takes what The Witcher does and, and kind of runs with it even further in that your hair grows and your beard grows. I didn't realise your hair grew. I was like... Yeah, it does. I was like, this guy's got really long hair. I'm sure he didn't have long hair to begin with. You can grow your... I think you, there's like 10 notches on the, on the length of your hair. 
and uh, I think once you hit five or six, it says like if you want to grow your hair any longer, you, you need to drink tonic. hair tonic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just look like fucking Grizzly Adams if you drink <laughs> hair tonic. It's it's crazy. Um, and it, it it what I liked is it if you play the game, it, it seems to match the days that pass in the game, and there's some, sometimes there's uh, time jumps in the story. Yeah, like days will pass, or months, weeks will pass, or even months will pass. Yeah. And when he's next to Arthur, he's just got a full bushy beard, or he's got even longer hair, or something. The, the, the fucking worst thing that happened to me in terms of time hops was. Uh, there's a part in the story where I'm out for like a month and like just the, the story jumps for, for a month and then as soon as I stood up there was Miss Grimshaw going hey Arthur you've not put much in the camp like the camp kitty recently you haven't really been contributing have you I was like bitch I've been doing stuff been for a month. yeah that's this is one of the other mechanics which I really liked it, it seems to um, be some strong opinions on it um, I really liked having a camp and you can contribute to the camp uh, you, Arthur Morgan has his own little ammunition stall, which is, I mean, it's for him really. Let's just be yeah. frank and honest. Um, Mr. Pearson, that you mentioned before, he's an old uh, Navy guy, but he manages the food supply and the butchery supply. You can give him your carcasses, your pelts. He'll sell that for money, and in turn, he'll have more supplies for the shop. And then there's a medicine cabinet as well, which you've got your tonics, like your mm. hair tonics, and also tonics for your dead eye, your stamina, and your health. So if you're going to go out. Uh, rooting, tooting, shooting it's good to kind of stock up and all those things but I found myself I don't know about you um, regularly supplying Mr. Pearson with carcasses especially early on in the game yes definitely early on and I found myself adding contribute to the Camp Kitty now the Camp Kitty is like a um, it's like a bank account really I looked at yeah. it and you, you put your money into it and there's a big ledger and you see other characters contributing although they do a communal, a communal place for funds um, and other people do contribute to be fair not as much I think one guy contributed a bat, a bat wing for 13 cents. I mean, uh, you, you kind of thank him for the effort. But then it has a, a logic or a, a, an account, like a balance sheet of everyone's ingoings and outgoings and spends. So you just see me, Arthur Morgan, Pell, Arthur Morgan, Pocket Watch, Arthur Morgan, Gold Wedding Band. And then you'd see someone else, um, a fish, like for 50 cents yeah. and stuff like that. So I feel like I'm doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. But then you, you're the only one who's getting the grief, like you say. Like, yeah, oh, I even put yeah. anything for the key. Yeah. You bitch, I'm, I put I, $1,000 in here. <laughs> I, you, could, you can buy things for the camp. There's a stable for your horses. Um, at one point, you can get a boat. Yes. Uh, and you can upgrade the... Uh, the carts you can upgrade your ammunition cart to have more ammunition to have some dynamite it extends like the the kind of variety of things that are available as you say there's more types of ammo for different weapons yep. and, and usually kind of sub weapons like dynamite throwing knives yeah. throwing hawks uh, more types of medicines and tonics uh, different types of food variances of them yeah and also you can upgrade the camp itself if you're handing the carcasses and the uh, pelts you can yeah. add uh, bones to the entrance of the camp to give, give it like a little uh, Native American look there's uh, fur rugs you can add to around the campfire so people are kind of... I must admit, I didn't... So, the, yeah, there's, there's kind of the, the functional things in terms of that you basically invest your money in this central fund and you can use that to then purchase upgrades. Like, Dutch wants a new a new tent, so he's got a fancy Well, tent. Dutch has to have a nice presidential suite, doesn't he? Well, that's... Uh, fucking hell, that, it seems like this is not the priority we should focus yeah, yeah. on right now. But then, like, um, Arthur's tent gets upgraded and it gets, it gets a map, which is the only kind of... You can use fast to fast travel, travel yeah. but it's the only real form of fast travel in the game. Yeah. Uh, well, kind of, um, and then you can, as you say, upgrade the different trolleys and stalls and stuff you have. But then, yeah, you've got this. What ties very much into the hunting is all the, uh, you know, get six beaver pelts and a bear pelt, and we'll make uh, covers for the chairs. Yeah, and it's more the cosmetic stuff, and I didn't do much of that because it's involved. It's, it's involved. Uh, I kind of regret um, not doing it. I, I, I've got all the saves. I'm going to go back and do them. I think. Um, but yeah, it's involved. I, I, if, if anything, I'd like to have been even more involved. I'd like to have done more for the camp. I don't know if you're really with me on that. I am. Um, I probably could because it's very much like you. If you get like all these parts, we'll craft covers for the chair. But th that's what there is. You can't say I want a blue cover or a red cover. You just get like it's, it's very set as to what you can have and what you can yes. do with it. Um, and I did a few things, and I did notice them uh, when I did them, but I didn't do very much of it at all. Um, it it feels like the options are fairly limited, but getting to those options is very involved. So I think if you want to do it, it's it's something that'll take a lot of time. So variation in that might have been a little bit better, but I didn't do them in the first place, so I, I can't really complain about <laughs> it. Um, so yeah, but the, the camp is a very involved mechanic in itself. And what I liked about it, though, much like the survival elements, is once you do a few upgrades, 
it very much becomes like this self sustaining that's the one self sustaining <laughs> thing uh, and you don't have to bother with it yeah uh, if you don't want to if you like I, I, around the camp. I think at the very early stage it's almost I don't want to say it forces you but it's almost strong arms you into helping out the camp it's very much a focus of the story yeah. like, like let's get back on our feet uh, let's you know let's hey Arthur go out and give us meat give us money you yeah. know you're the only fucker that can do anything everyone else is used to it um <laughs> You know, it is very much that, and as the game progresses, that becomes less of a focus, I think, in terms of story, and it becomes how much do you really care about it. And I mentioned this before: there's certain points in the story where money isn't an issue, and that the economy in this game is weird. In that, if you go out robbing, you're going to come back with like cents rather than dollars, but then you'll do a story mission that gives you a thousand dollars up front, and you're like, well, shit. That took me an hour to do, and I spent six hours robbing carriages. Which is one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of power through the story, because I just found myself getting loads of money through the story rather than kind of my own errands. Yeah, completely. And I mean, we said when we talked about the story a little bit earlier, chapter four is kind of like, uh, chapters one to four are definitely the stronger part of the game, and the back half does drag a little bit. Chapter four um, very much feels like that pinnacle where you've got all your money, you can buy anything you want. Everything, the game is pretty much fully open at that point. Um, if you want a f- save file to fuck around in, that's probably the time to do it. I would say chapter three or chapter four. Um, if you want to have make a save file to kind of then be at the top before it kind of drops off in yes. terms of what your availability. Yeah, not so much availability, more incentive for you for things to do. Because, like you say, chapter six, I didn't feel the incentive to uh, do all that things again. No, completely. Because the story feels like it has more urgency to it than than maybe the side stuff does. Um, but I mean, the, in in terms of like, every, I think generally the the thing to say is it, there's a lot to do, and everything that there is to do is very detailed and very involved. Like, there's all a, a lot of the activities from the previous game have come back, like poker and blackjack, and they are fully fleshed out versions of. I'm those really games. good at poker. I made loads of money on poker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not, um, or not as patient as I should be. Um, I play a bit of blackjack, um, dominoes. I quite like dominoes actually. I, I I can't stand it. I think I had one game with Tilly. And she beat this shit. I don't think I was supposed to lose, but I she beat this shit out of me. I was like, I'm never playing with you again. God damn bitch, you got damn yeah. cheater. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's, there's there's tons of stuff to do in this game. It's it's ridiculous. And then you've got all your stranger missions and side missions. Some yep. are better than others. And the stranger missions are really good. It's not just. I think some are better than others. Yeah. The good ones are very good, but there's some I really was like wasn't feeling like. There's a guy who's like Frankenstein. <laughs> Uh, like, the the Russian guy is he Russian or is he a doctor? He's like a scientist. He's basically the Nikola Tesla guy. Yeah, uh, is yes, yeah, yeah. I've, I haven't finished that arc yet, uh, but I know what you're talking about. I've got to that kind of That's point. Kind of like, uh, this is all right, but then again, you've got people like uh, there is a, a French artist in well, in Saint Denis, the town. Uh, Charles de Grani or something like that. Fucking love his story. He's so he's, good. It's such a random. When you go what? to the his art exhibition, it's like yeah. That's the that, that without is, without trying to spoil it is it's it's good. I yeah, just, some of them are really funny. Like I like Margaret. I don't know if I know Margaret. Um, rescuing the animals, the, the tiger. No, or? I don't know Margaret. Okay. Oh, I do. I I don't know. I've not seen Margaret, but I have been told about Margaret. I I, I think I mentioned to you early on. Yeah. Um, if you've got an old safe, I'll go do it. It's, it. That's probably one of my favorite side missions. Uh, it sounds it's very really funny. Good. Um. And I mean, on top of those stranger missions, you've got random encounters. Like, did you meet? Did you ever find Gavin? Gavin. <laughs> uh, I don't know where you got, but um, at the end of the game, I still haven't found Gavin. And the guy looking for Gavin is just a fucking state. Yeah, it's like at the point now where I'm not it's, sure. It's just love. I don't think there is a Gavin. I don't know if there ever was. I can't. I, I don't know at this point. I'm, I'm pretty sure there is. He's just hidden in the world, and I think I'll, I'm going to give up and look at spoilers. I'm I'm not so sure he's there. I, I, I just don't I, know I where. I just think Gavin is either never existed or he's dead, and this guy can't come to terms with it. <laughs> uh, but there's just like, some of that. Yeah, it kind of it's, it's basically it starts off as you're um, playing the game. Uh, he, he's a Cockney guy, isn't he? Really, yeah. he's from England. I, I'm looking for my mate Gavin. Have you seen him? <laughs> and it's just you can hear him as you walk around this town. So you go to investigate. Well, you can tell him like, no, I haven't seen him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you keep going back to him, like, you still looking for your mate Gavin? Yeah, you seen him? No, no. Oh, I'm gonna keep looking for him then. He just wanders the streets, looking like he's shouting for him. And it, yeah, he pretends he has binoculars. He's like this, like probably binoculars with his eyes and stuff. But at the end, he's just he's lost his mind. Yeah, he's, he's just he's, like Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really fucking grim. <laughs> it is. It's it's really upset. I, I, 
Part of me thinks it's an animal. It's almost like, but then he does say it's a guy and he's he's from it's South very funny. stuff. At the beginning, I thought it's his pet. It's it's a, it's a dog or something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, and there's there's a lot to run yeah. on. I think that's really good. It's, there's a lot of humorous elements, even though it's it's quite it's a a very gritty and game. real and kind of very sad game at times as well. But it's it's human. You, you have a lot of fun times, a lot of fun there's moments. Some very funny moments in the game. It's it's, it's yeah. It's that like it's here that that human element, that polish that it has in terms of the presentation is great. Um, but in the gameplay, as I say, it's very slow. Everything 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 you can do in this game is very deep and detailed and slow. And it it basically says, look, we ain't rushing through this. I don't give a shit if you've only got ten minutes to play this. You know, we're going to take our time and you're going to enjoy the atmosphere that we've crafted and you're going to put up with it. And if you don't like it, well, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> this this game very much that that feels like the motto of this game. Yeah. I do what I want, and if you don't like it, fuck off. Um, and that's gonna put some people off, I think. But I really liked it. I don't think there's many games like that or that uncompromising. Um, I think some of its gameplay elements are a little bit dated. Uh, the health system with the cores and the bar is a bit weird. Yeah, I I find myself just. If, if it was getting really fun in a fight, just going to a corner and just being like a mad hungry bastard and the, just the sky eating the shit out of everything. Yeah, like just goblin getting, cheese wheels. There's cheese wedges. I just had loads of, I'm just eating loads of cheese wedges and just getting back into the game. And like, but some, some items have detrimental effects. For example, there's cigars. Um, and cigarettes that increase your dead eye, but that has an effect on your health and your stamina as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's... Um, but, it, I mean, it works. It's not horrible. It's just a little bit convoluted for its own good, I think. Um, uh, and, like, we haven't really touched on the horse. No. The horse is probably going to be your best friend. you got to brush him uh, and pat him and say, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to calm him down if he or she gets upset or agitated by predators or... If there's gunfights going on, yeah, I, I love otherwise how, they'll book you off. I, I love how much Arthur loves his horse, though. He, he's proper. I just like, like love the like, who's a good boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good girl. You're yeah. right, girl. <laughs> and he, like, he, he, I like how it actually does know whether it's a girl or a boy. It sounds like such a simple thing, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the horses are modeled different. We mentioned the shrinking testicles. Yeah, uh, and Arthur does change what he says. There are a lot of lines of dialogue of Arthur I think praising his horse. Yeah, I, well, I think the game had like 800 pages worth of dialogue. It's, cr- it's crazy. It's, it's mad, and I'm sure 100 of them are just the horse. <laughs> You're probably, talking to the horse. Probably would be. Um, yeah, it, it, the horse is great. You've got you to brush it to keep it calm. You've got to feed it. You've got to look after it. You can put different saddles on it. It's got its own dress-up system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you can change its hair. You can shorten it. You can change the colour. There's different breeds of horses that have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. There's muscular ones that have more health but then they're not very fast and you've got speedy ones but they just fucking oh. you could hit a rock and you just die oh god and that's awful I feel so bad for my horse so many times where you hit a rock and it just trips over and it, it's just rolling around in pain I, I've, I've misjudged a fence or a cliff edge sometimes and it's just, it's just head just pile drive my horse into the ground have you had it where like your horse basically is in the death throws yeah let's say like press square to kill the horse and put it out its misery or if you've got a horse tonic revive, you can revive it, it. And I, w- I didn't have one early on and my horse got killed by some bandits um, and I had to pick up the saddle I didn't realise you could forego the saddle and just walk back to now but I picked up the saddle and walked a good hour to the town because <laughs> out in the fucking country and I, I enjoyed I, it sounds weird but I enjoyed myself because I was taking in Authentic. the scenery and I was yelling at people to give me a pass trying to give, get them to give me a lift uh, but it didn't work. I think, uh, and then irrelevant. When I got to the uh, town, you could just walk into any stable, and they would pay. I think you pay a fee, and it retrieves your uh, saddle for you. Oh, really? Yeah. So you don't have to carry it. But I was, yeah, like a good bit because you can't run very far with this really heavy saddle. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's, it, getting trapped out in the middle of the countryside. That it sounds was. like it wasn't fun, but in its own way, it was very memorable uh, for I think right reasons for me. Yeah. I, I, I and yeah. you definitely build that like relationship with your horse I really love my horse uh, when I was playing the game I thought it was, it was my horse and I really liked it yeah um, I, you can have many horses but I'm sure there's one for you colour scheme I, and I think early in the game I had a few different ones and as I upgraded I got to a one where I thought this has got decent stats and I'm, I'm just going to stick with this one and I just kept it and because it, it was my horse and it was good uh, yeah yeah the horses are great they, they move really well I think it feels like when you're riding them they, they, you're, you're not controlling the horse you're just guiding it it feels very authentic yeah, like that it's, like, it's, it's a good distinguish of that it's, you're not controlling the horse like you say it's, it's very much you're telling what to do and it's listening for the most part but there's some times where it 
I don't think he tries to do his own thing, but he kind of misjudges what you're telling it to do, and it kind of puts itself in danger. Would you shoot into. other people's horses? Um, I didn't. I think I did it once, and I lost honor, and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. And that's probably uh, yeah. the incentive not to do it, and I think that's probably the incentive going to the online aspect, which I'd probably come on to. I was doing uh, a bounty mission not too long ago, and on the way back, two guys like rocking up said, hey, that's our bounty. That's our boss, yeah. Oh, uh, I bounty. They were bounty okay. hunters who basically wanted to take it. Steal so it. Before, they could, like, uh, the, before they could even react, I went into dead eye mode, which I don't think we've touched on very much. But um, I basically, instead of shooting them, I shot the horses in the f- both the horses in the face and then rode off while they were falling <laughs> over. <laughs> I thought, yeah, fuck you guys. Um, but yeah, Dead Eye is another thing. It's kind of like bullet time. Um, it's it, the returning mechanic from Red Dead Redemption. It is, uh, but have, it's changed now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still the same in the sense that you have a bar um, or a, a, a finite source of Dead Eye. And you initiate Dead Eye by pressing the uh, R3 button or the right stick button. Uh, whilst you have a weapon in your hand, what happens is time slows down to a crawl. It goes a nice uh, saviour to, oh, yep, to give you that have your rest yeah. feel. <laughs> you have your uh, aiming reticule up, and you can either early on in the game paint enemies with uh, Dead Eye Track, and it will put a mark on them. Yeah, it's like if you move your reticle over them, it automatically kind of logs a, a yep. hit on them, um, and then you let go and it fires. Yep. which is it's got a little less refinement than what the original one had. But well, that's how the original started. You you could paint. Uh, and then later on you unlock the ability to kind of manually do it yourself. Yes, so like level 2 you can actually target and then oh, right, I want to hit them in the heart, yep. and the leg, then the head. Um, which is kind of how I remember it working in the original game. And then you can level up again and I think it shows you instant kill spots. So like they'll glow red in the head and the heart. I think it's like critical hits yes. areas. Like the, like the head and the middle of the chest and like they say the heart is yeah. kind of little bread. So tag them there and they'll go down or they'll stay down and you can worry about their mates or something um, and I definitely use Dead Eye a lot especially in the bigger fights to clear crowds yeah I, I didn't think I'd use it as much as I thought I did um, I struggled with it in duels I don't know how you did with duels I didn't play many to be honest they, like that surprised me how few there are in the main story yeah um, there's very few in the main in some of the side missions there's quite a few um, and as you're going around town and antagonizing people, some t- I think I walked into a, into a bar once and I hit some guy on the way in and he challenged me to a duel. I'm not sure how they work. I've done a few and I'm still not sure and, how and I, went, and I And I went outside and I think um, he, he, he fell over drunk, he collapsed, and he actually get to duel him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's other times where um, yeah, I think I've failed some duels, but it's, there's a very kind of um, finesse to it. Is there's, there's definitely a. a it's not just kind of following I don't think following instructions is a good idea which sounds really weird it doesn't make sense to me and how it works the way it so I've tried it. to explain Jules um, the right trigger button comes up and you gently hold it down as you gently hold it down a meter fills around the circle what you're supposed to do is wait for that bar to fill let go of the right trigger and hit it again and you'll enter kind of dead eye mode okay now the quicker you do it the, the quicker you bring up your gun to paint the uh, bad guy and to get a shot in, but then the less time you have in Dead Eye. Okay. The longer you do it, the more time you'll have, but by then he's already got his gun out and he's shooting at you. So there's right. like a balance between the two. Jesus. The and that's what I'm saying. Is there's a there's a, a finesse to it, and I, th- I think I've just about got it after playing hundreds of hours in the game. <laughs> so I'm all set. And you can also do um, the Dead Eye just out and about. If you hold the R2 button instead of just getting your gun out, it'll just bring up the reticle even if you're not in the duel. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I'd say that the instructions that they pop up on screen just I was like, I, I don't know what this means. This yeah, doesn't yeah. seem to be working this, how you're describing it. times when I've done that, I've, I've been like with a bounty and his mates have come to stop me and they've kind of trying to talk me out of it and I've kind of gently pressed the R2 button. It's almost like your hand getting oh, okay. onto the revolver and then by the time I've picked it up, they've realised what's happened and I've already targeted them to take oh, them down. Cool. God, I know. I did not know that. Yeah, so I, I managed to have spent a little 80 odd hours in this game and didn't, didn't know <laughs> Still that. lots to learn. I think that's maybe one thing as well. This game throws a lot of information at you in the, the first six hours or more. Um, and it's very much just a pop up, a non intrusive pop up that says, hey, this is all this, how the system it works. Yeah. Uh, and it's there for 10 seconds. And if you don't read it, well, fuck you. You yeah, yeah, yeah. figure it, it out yourself. It comes up frequently. You can turn it off, but I think it's for early on, just leave it on. And don't worry too much about it. It's not going to affect the game at all. I think I felt quite overwhelmed with a lot of stuff going on. I was like, yeah. How the hell am I supposed to remember this? And if you don't but do as, something for a week and you come back, you're like, shit, okay, I used to know how to do this. Which is why you can leave the tooltips on and it'll remind you, like, if you're hunting animals or you've got your scent, you can press R, this button here to kind of track the animal. If you're in a duel, press the R2 button. Da, 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 da. It's, it, it does yeah. a good job of reminding you and you don't feel lost. 
and you don't feel you need to kind of go back to basics good yeah it, I, I never felt frustrated but sometimes I felt overwhelmed and maybe like yeah, I just had to figure out what what was going on. I could always get by. I don't think I'm a master hunter or anything like that because I don't understand the ins and outs no. necessarily. But it, I can still hunt. Um, yeah, of Christ, I, I, I can't really think of what. Oh, one thing else I was going to mention is that we mentioned there's a very there's not many fa- many opportunities to fast travel, which again towards the back end of the game was a bit of a frustration because it means you have to travel across the map every couple of ten minutes or so, every every yeah. couple of missions or so. Um, you got the the map if you upgrade your camp, you can get horse and carriage uh, like a taxi essentially to different, yep. between different towns just like Skyrim just More. like Skyrim, <laughs> just Skyrim. Uh, you can get on a train which takes you between stations uh, but there's no way to like click on a map to a, like to a location you've been previously in and teleport there but what you can do and I think the game does tell you this in the early stages um, if you set a waypoint and then set your horse off down the road and then go into cinematic camera mode yep. Arthur and let go of the controls Arthur will just continue riding to that point Oh, you can let go of the controls. Yeah, you, he, it's automated. Oh, I did. I was. I just held on to X. You can just walk away and go make a cup of tea. Oh, I mean I the game idea. will continue to play. So like, I've so had, if you get ambushed or something, then I've it's had, like, you'll ride through it and you might might survive. Or like, if bounty hunters come and get you, you might be. Fucked. We can imagine you go to dinner, come back, and Arthur just like got his eyeball hanging off. Like, what the fuck? Happened yeah, to you? it's it, but it, it, it because there's a lot of travel in this game. It does let you kind of just take in the world in a little bit, or at least have a break. Cinematic camera was is one of definitely the better mechanics I've seen it's in cool. a game. Full stop. It's really cool. Rather than let's say Assassin's Creed, you're following a, a character who may not match your ma- walking speed or something. Oh my god! Cinematic camera, you initiate it, and you can, like you say, just very much forget. Leaving you to focus on the story, what people are saying, yeah, um, and taking in the surroundings as well. Even though the cinematic camera has a fixed camera largely, um, you can move it with the uh, R3 button. You can change the angle by clicking the R3 stick as well. Yes, um, and it it's it, great. It's a great way of just seeing the world around it you. It doesn't play the game for you, but it definitely puts training wheels on you, and you can you know you can just kind of sit back and hold the bare minimum input and let the let the that it sequence. wants you to take in this game and that's the best way of doing it yeah. I, i'll be very surprised if we'll see more games in the future it uh, taking on this um yeah I, a mechanic it, and again but on the, on the flip side that it's it's one of these indulgent things that rockstar do because they've got the money and the manpower and the, the exploitative processes of, of that manpower to do this shit and one of the things that <laughs> came out before this game about when we were talking about this before we start recording about the whole you know, 80 hours, uh, 100 hour weeks and things like that and the culture of Rockstar. Um, it's almost the culture of game development in general. It which it, It's wrong. I understand why it's done because that's always been the culture but people, I mean, it's good that they've called them out and people should absolutely be called out about it because especially in this country, it's illegal practice yeah, and it's exploitative as well. Yeah, completely. And people are very much strong-armed into doing stuff like this and it shouldn't be like that. But one of the examples I, of what Rockstar do like that, they're, they're very indulgent is that not long in the, in the last six months last year of development they um, they decided that they wanted their cutscenes to have letterbox to make it more cinematic and they can't just slap black bars on them because they're framed in a certain way so they had to go and reframe all of their cutscenes with letterbox on them uh, to to have it work properly and that was like somebody's job <laughs> to go through and do that fuck man that's ridiculous and that's you know seven years into development when they just decided to do that or whatever I'm probably getting them their ins and outs of that story wrong but the principle's right uh, yeah that they just decided hey let's just fucking do it because you know why we not we can we've got the money we've got the manpower um, we're not in any rush to get this out so fuck it yeah uh, I mean yeah as I say I think that the gameplay this year is, is what will be device on people it's very deliberate um, and we've talked a lot about it I think we've done our best to skirt around spoilers and the like yeah I, I suppose really what's your overall opinion of Red Dead I think we've been fairly positive but I'd like to know what your definitive opinion is what definitive opinion um, I went in thinking it probably wouldn't work as a prequel and I was happy to be proven wrong um, it, the gameplay is very addictive very fun I've found myself kind of spending hours just doing the most mundane aimless shit that I wouldn't normally do in a game <laughs> yeah. just to take in the surrounding the settings and try to enjoy for what it is uh, it's phenomenal in terms of graphics uh, in terms of character design story um, this is definitely a contender for my game of the year. Um, it's, it's a toss up between this and God of War. The two, two largely different games and two very different reasons why I want them to win yeah. game of the year. Um, the other massive aspect which we haven't touched upon is music as well. Oh, God, but yeah. I think it ties into story, so I've tried to 
not mention music too much because it has its place in the story but music here is again phenomenal incredible and it just shows that if there's if, if time is taken for a game any project and love is given to it and careful consideration um, it will always produce something fantastic and this is just a combination of Rockstar's um, current ethos with the games that they've been producing like GTA and previous Red Dead it's just kind of combination of all the good things and then adding more of that into it yeah. some things that don't work some things I would have liked to have changed some things I would have preferred more of but I'm not going to make any good plays this is an absolute uh, fantastic game something I'm going to remember of this gen if there's any game to remember this gen it would be this one yeah I think you are I'll probably echo a lot of them sentiments I think this is a game where Rockstar have set out to do something very deliberate and they don't care if you like it or not they they set out and did something that they wanted to do I think it's long development period has created something that's incredibly deep robust and, and detailed uh, but because of that long development cycle it's also got some dated aspects and some aspects that maybe don't work as well I've been have been are now frowned upon as games have moved on in the last kind of you know five eight years since this has been in development um, very much like yourself I think the story is fantastic I think it's probably the best one we've had this generation um, and the characters are probably some of the better ones we've had they feel very fleshed out and very real we mentioned earlier everyone's got a, 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 everyone's got an arc and everyone goes somewhere nobody's just window dressing for the sake of it not really um, and Arthur Morgan is probably one of the, my favourite protagonists of a game that we've ever had I think he's an absolutely fantastic character really really like him uh, didn't expect to like the story that as much as I do as you say because it was a prequel yeah. I had preconceived notions of where things were going and it managed to subvert those expectations along the way uh, while also hitting the beats it needs to so it, it, it links perfectly in with the, the first game thematically and everything um, felt like it was maybe a little bit too long for its own good I feel like it starts to drag in, in chapters 5 and 6 it starts throwing in too many new subplots that I didn't care about the main subplot was reaching its crescendo and it was getting slowed down by these subplots I, I didn't have time to really get the grips with and really care about at that point so they could have trimmed the fat a little bit and it was maybe a bit overindulgent towards the end but at the same time the high points of those ending sequences are fucking amazing and it definitely brings it back in yeah. towards, towards the very end of the game um as I said, I think the gameplay might put a lot of people off. I didn't have a problem with it, and I feel like the fact that it does play slower and more deliberate, uh, it's a nice change of pace from a lot of the other faster paced shooters we've got. Um, it's something different and, and not bad in my eyes, just just different, and I like that. And it, I think it, it, it aims to do something very, very specific and deliberate, and it pulls it off, so I, do, I don't have a problem with that. Um, yeah, this this feels like Rockstar decided to make a Western, you know, Bethesda game. It feels has a tangibility of the world. The world feels very well realized, and it's a great thing to explore. We didn't even touch on all the weird shit you can find out in the overworld, and I've missed half of it and read about the other half just because of how big and detailed and, and vast this world is. Um, I've played through it once, started a new game last night. Probably won't play through it at all now but I'll definitely start a new save file and, and, and come back to it I was, later I was very lucky to have a save I think chapter 2 chapter 3 so I'm, that's my go to I didn't really start thinking about things until about chapter 5 in I was like ah oh, I've kind of fucked this up but, uh, too late now yeah um, but still I don't mind playing through it it's 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 great I you know for, for, for £50 or whatever we paid for this I think it, it was definitely one of the more expensive side for games in the UK coming out I think on PSN I, I did find I, I normally don't buy games more than £40 now <coughs> uh, just being a family man and being a, <laughs> uh, a misery bastard but I really wanted this game and the more it got close to release I was like I need to get this game I couldn't find anything less than £40 uh, even maybe £43, £44 in and in the end I, I went to I was done, I got 50 quid. I was like, ah, fuck it. I was yeah, I think I paid full price for this. I mean, PSN, it was 50, uh, 60 quid for yeah. the basic version. They did, they've done that with a few games recently where, like, obviously the big profile ones, they definitely know they're going to up the price a little bit, which is a bit scummy. But, uh, yeah, definitely worth the full price. It's it's like a 60 to 80 hour game, I would say, depending on how you... Even if you just casually saunter through... you know, Because the, the game ain't going to let you do more than casually sort it through the main quest line <laughs> it ain't gonna let you run through this I'd game I'd love to see like speed runs <laughs> or the, what the um, like a timing 50 hour or something like that oh yeah I've managed to shave off um, 35 minutes by doing this game um, you know it's 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 long and it's 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 not it's got no filler we've got plenty of open world games like the Assassin's Creed games which are very much full of filler I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is very much guilty of that this year from what I hear about it this game is not that it's a single it's a curated single player experience against the backdrop of an, an incredibly detailed open world um, it's definitely worth it 
definitely not for everybody, um, but I think it's worth giving it a chance. I think it's definitely worth sitting and playing through chapter one and two before you really make up your mind. Um, but definitely one I, I could recommend. I think it's, as you say, Cash, it's it's one of the stronger contenders for Game of the Year. Yeah. I um, think it'd be interesting to see like the Game Awards and the BAFTAs coming out in the next few months. And yeah. What was victory. Let's not talk about Fortnite winning the joystick. But. Yeah. <laughs> but never mind. It's not even really. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, an, it's an aside. But uh, yeah, Red Dead Redemption is is really strong recommendation from, from me. Um, with the caveat that it might not be for you but I, I would say that most people who are going to pick this up are going to like it yeah, I think I, you, you will know going in whether you're in, into a cowboy simulator or not yeah I think if people have made the decision to buy this game they're not going to get disappointed I, I, I haven't met anyone on any forums yet that's been let down by the game or anything like that I'm, there might be some but it's, it just seems to be a winner for all the right reasons mm-hmm.